The following is an exclusive high-definition presentation of the UFL on HDNet. You want to send out the right message. And the message for us this week is that we can play this game at a high level, we can play this game discipline, and we can dominate. We're going to work hard, we're going to make plays, we're going to have fun. Welcome to the city. Its allure has stolen hearts over the years, and tonight, Two football teams are here to try to recapture their hearts. The California Redwoods and the New York Sentinels from AT&T Park here in San Francisco. United Football League action live on HDNet. Good evening, everyone. Kenny Rice and Paul McGuire. If you look back at their first game, it's almost spot on. Not perfect. Both teams had double figure leads. They lose the leads. They wind up both getting blown out. So coming in, it's a huge game for New York and for California, and Dennis Green is wasting no time, Paul. He has made a big change at quarterback. Mike McMahon comes in replacing Shane Boyd. And you would think that all the pressure would be on Mike McMahon in California. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think so. I think it's on the defense, because the defense, you got to understand something. They have not seen anything on this guy. They didn't find out until today that the change was made. The last time that Mike McMahon played was in Toronto in 2007. So they have no film on him. They have no idea what his snap count's gonna be. They have no idea about his, the fluctuation in his voice. I think they're gonna be a little bit tentative at the beginning, then they'll come after him. We're taking a look down at his stats, and they're hard to find. <laughs> and I'm sure that's the way for the team as well. One thing that both of them know is they're 0 and 1. And when you only have seven regular season games, the second game becomes huge. One team, Florida, unbeaten. The winner of this will be only a game out, and just as important, the loser of this game goes to 0 and 2 with five games remaining. I love the fact that Teddy Cottrell says there's no such thing as a must win or a must loss. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, how about this? You better win, and you better not lose. <laughs> you need this game badly. <laughs> and certainly that's the way California is approaching this. In addition to McMahon, who is starting, they have also made wholesale changes this week. They brought in eight new players. One of them will start in the secondary. Two of them we expect to see play several snaps tonight at wide receiver. They're getting serious quick. Yeah, isn't it kind of amazing, though, when you look at that, that whole roster, and they only play one game. But all the receivers are gone except Joe West. He's the only wide receiver that, that Denny Green caught or kept. He took and brought in eight new guys after the first week and changed the quarterback. You better win or you're gone. So while California has uh, spent most of the week introducing themselves to each other, they're also getting ready to play some football. Two people that we introduce you to with pride once again, our sideline reporters, Natalie Taylor and Ron Kruk will be patrolling the sideline. Ron, you're with New York. You were with them last week. What's going on with New York? We've talked about all the changes for California. Well, thank you, Kenny. After rushing for only a total of 102 yards last week, New York quarterback Quinn Gray said they must establish a running game tonight. To accomplish that goal, well, that just got much more difficult. Leading rusher LeBrandon Tofield is dressed, but he will not play tonight due to a shoulder injury. New York will look to Wake Forest all-time leading rusher Chris Barclay to replace Tofield. Also expected to see some action in the backfield tonight is Joe Rubin and Tyrone Gross. To talk about a key matchup in tonight's game, we go over to the California sideline and Natalie Taylor. Nat. Ron, not just a matchup. We're talking the key matchup tonight, and that's New York's Simeon Rice taking on California's left tackle, Tyler Llewellyn. Today when we were talking with Coach Green, Tyler walked into the room. Coach Green looked at him and said, hey, Tyler, what's your role tonight? Why are you here? Tyler caught a little off guard, said, I don't know, Coach. Why is that? Coach Green looked at him and said, you are to block Simeon Rice at all costs. I don't know about you, Kenny, but that's some pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. You know, we could all sit up here from this distance and say block Simeon Rice from this distance. Yeah, and it's, you know, last week he, we knew he was going to do something. He had a sack. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't play extremely well, but he did have a sack, and that's what this team needs. They need to get some turnovers. We'll see if these teams are ready to recapture their heart. 
break that one game losing streak. We'll have the kickoff live when we come back. California and New York on HDNet. Right now at Men's Warehouse, you'll find a great selection of fall designer suits on sale. And when you buy any suit, this right this on.com. This is the UFL on HDNet. Gorgeous night. This is what the Chamber of Commerce loves to show you. Come to San Francisco, come to AT&T Park, and in this case, watch pro football as the California Redwoods get ready to play their first home game in the United Football League, playing the New York Sentinels. The Sentinels won the toss. They have elected to receive, and kicking things off will be Parker Douglas from South Dakota State, and standing back is Chris Barkley, who we will see in the starting backfield tonight because of the injury to Toefield. Also back with him is Tyrone Gross, the return man at the moment for New York. Kick is up, drifting over towards the side, and the game is underway. Barkley at the 10, up to the 20, where he slides down right there, and that's where they will start. Fifteen yards on the return as Quinn Gray comes out. You see the numbers on Gray. He had a beautiful start to the game last week, leading him on an opening scoring drive, two big passes to Crafonzo Thorpe, and then after that, not much. Well, and it's really hard for young teams to recover. They made a mistake going in for <clears throat> excuse me, going in for a touchdown, and they never could recover. Charles Ali is supposed to be in the backfield tonight. The handoff is given over on the right side, and they will start to try to see if they can keep it on the ground and get something established there, which they were not able to do last week. We look across the front line. Again, it's a rather inexperienced front line. Harvey at center has been around a little bit, played in the arena of football. Uh, Thompson has been getting better. We take a look at Quinn Gray and the guys he throws to. Thorpe has a touchdown reception. Jen had a couple of big catches. Ali will share time with Sapp in the backfield, and then Barkley, who had a decent game last week at running back when he was called upon. And on second down, play action, throwing down the sideline and overthrowing Steve Sanders, the intended receiver, and moving with him step for step was Marville Underwood in the secondary for California. And you can see here the way this is set up. is We're on a baseball field. It's running from left field to home plate. We take a look at the defensive line here. We talked about some of the inexperience. Jason Stewart does have experience in the NFL. And uh, Jason Parker has been playing well as of late. Thomas is the man that sticks out there. He played with the Vikings, briefly with the 49ers. Bass just into the lineup, and he is in the starting lineup. One of eight guys picked up this week. And throwing it on... Third down, incomplete, going once again for Sanders. So a great start last week, three and out. That's Robert Herbert in on the coverage, and Herbert is one of the guys that Green raves about. We'll talk more about him in the secondary tonight, and they will have to kick it away. That was not very impressive by Quinn Gray. I mean, he, on, on second down, he had a receiver. Uh, Steve Sanders wide open downfield and he couldn't hit him and that ball was so high on that last pass There's no one could have caught it Kicking it away is Aaron Horn the new kicker for New York BJ Sam steps back watches it bounce takes it on the 32 and Gets about a yard and is brought down almost on the spot and the man that gets in there first is the receiver Ryan Holt number seven to make the tackle So after three and out, we get our first look at Mike McMahon out of Rutgers. He was the first quarterback ever drafted off a of Rutgers team to the NFL, back with the Lions in 01. And just remember now, they had three weeks of practice, which they never hit anybody. They had one game, which was last week, and he did not play in that game, Mike McMahon. So now this is his first start, really, since 2007. And he's introduced right away to the center, Mike Mabry, and his first pass, it's a completion to Doug Gabriel out in the flat. He moves up across the 40, and there he is met and brought down by Alfred Frencher. 
and we set the lineups for you. Look at that offensive line. We heard about Llewellyn and the big challenge that he has tonight going up against Rice. Edwards, a starter in the past with the Bears. Uh, Todd Williams played some with the Titans. And a lot of guys will be seen out there. We don't know all the guys that are going to be coming in and out. Laurie, we know, will be a tight end. Gabriel did get the start tonight. Uh, West is also in the lineup. And again, throwing it out in the flat, trying to set up a screen over there. That is Sonny Shackle for taking it in. And he is brought down almost immediately by Paul Pratt. And setting the defense now. Uh, a young defense with, of course, the exception of Simeon Rice. And Save has played well at times. At linebacker, Nathan Williams is tied for the league or for the team lead in tackles. He was impressive and very active in the first game. Paul Pratt, we've already seen him on a tackle. He had an interception. Uh, he and Williams had good first games. And on second down, a carry and a pickup of three yards on the play, and that is Corey Ross. You know, you, you just kind of like the, the starting series for McMahon. Uh, Dennis Green didn't ask him to do anything. He threw two screens to the outside, quick, quick slip screens on the outside. And then it's third and two. What do you do? They run the ball. The one thing that Dennis Green kept saying, and Harper and these guys last week and all this week, you've got to be able to run the ball to keep the drive going. A body and Ross in the backfield. Pitch goes to Ross going around the left side. Gets close to midfield, and there he's brought down. And Save makes the hit. Save, one of those guys, kind of typical. He's played some, and he, he came into the NFL in some camps. Then he went to Europe. Then he went to arena football, and the Colorado State player, you know, still with some hope out there and finding his niche here, he hopes, for Ted Cottrell's defense. And the whole thing about these guys, we've got an injured player for uh, New York on the, on the field. You know, the thing about these guys that, that the coaches are looking for and, and they need to get, and that's consistency. That's a, something that they didn't have. This is Paul Pratt that's down, number 37. He was a young man that in a tryout camp over a week ago made, not only made the football team, he along with Darren Williams, they ended up starting last week for the <laughs> Teddy Cottrell. This is, a, this is a pretty good football player now. And Pratt had the first interception in UFL history. He ran it back 27 yards. We were talking last night, Paul, to Teddy Cottrell, and he said, yeah, I wish he'd taken it one more yard and gotten that touchdown. Instead, he set it up at the one, and of course, that's when everything unraveled after the fumble. As you see, a little bit about Paul Pratt. From Los Angeles, he, he actually flew out about about five weeks ago, and he was trying out for the Florida team. That didn't work. He went back to L.A. Then he came back and tried out, and voila, here he is in the starting lineup for New York. And understand that both of those teams work out together in Orlando, so he had to go L.A., Orlando, back to L.A., back to Orlando. Second and 10, ball at the 49 of California. And again, they flip out the screen, and it's complete to Shackelford. Shackelford picks up about four, and he is brought down. And moving in to make the nice tackle there is... Cody Tiller, number 25, a recent addition to the team. Well, look at how far off Tony Tiller was, though. And you're, you're not going to be able to make that play close. The one thing that Tony Tiller did, though, is make the tackle. You just have to be sure that you make the tackle and don't let him get going down the sideline. But he held it to, what, a five- or six-yard game. And Tiller, who is just one of the new guys with the team, he just joined the club last week. It is third and six at the 46. Play action. McMahon has some time. Now pressure on. He's going to tuck and run. He's got the first down to the 40. Inside the 35. And brought down by Darian Williams. So if there was any rust on the legs, they got around, uh, got around that pretty quickly, didn't he? I'll tell you, and Llewellyn did a great job, I thought, on Simeon Rice on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the outside. And just watch McMahon. Simeon Rice is coming from the right side. You see him trailing now the quarterback. But McMahon, I mean, these are pretty good running skills. So McMahon, his first carry in a long time, and his first in the UFL is for a first down, first and 10 at the 33 of New York. Ross on the ground with an OB, 25-20. Ross has a man to beat inside the 10. Ross takes it round to the, about the two-yard line before he was run out of bounds. Tiller was in the vicinity and was able to keep him out of the end zone. I'll tell you, this is a, a magnificent run, but the blocking is perfect. Take a look at this. Here comes Ross. Look at the blocking at the hole. Once he gets the block, he gets back to the outside. Tony Tiller at number 25 saves a touchdown, but that was an outstanding run by Ross. 
30 yards on the play, first and goal at the three. Ross last week had a touchdown. Whistle, and a timeout asked for by New York. Mike McMahon, impressive in this drive. His first start, he has his team at first and goal situation. Back in San Francisco, California, threatening on their first drive. It is first and goal at the three. And in his first start, Mike McMahon has engineered a nice little series here for the home team Redwoods. The one thing you really like about it is that Dennis Green didn't give him anything difficult. They're all short passes and then running the football. The offensive line is doing a, a sensational job now. Ross, big play at tailback, had 30 yards to set this up on play action. Throwing in zone, touchdown, California. That looks so nice and so easy. Just take a look at the play action here, and what he does is he ends up hitting the tight end coming out of the coming around from the other side. This was set up so beautifully. All you really have to do is is the fake to one side, and nobody stayed with the tight end. And that is Kai Brown who made the catch and also changed his number before the game to 89. Brown with the catch. There is the kick to make it seven nothing, California. Let's take one more look. Mike McBrown wraps it up here. He makes the play action fake. He finds Kai Brown wide open, and California goes in front. The California Redwoods get on the board first. Mike McMahon, quarterback, great series right there, coming right out, playing well. You said tonight all you wanted to do was have fun. How nice is it to be able to start things off on it's this good foot? To start off on the right foot, you know, just get that score, and uh, now we got a lot of football left, and we just got to keep on going from there. Thank you very much, and good luck the rest of the game. Kenny. And you see the numbers on that drive, and uh, they did it uh, very short and sweet, didn't they, Paul? Yeah, Kai Brown, <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, we didn't get it because we didn't know that they changed his number. He was a linebacker. He was 53. Last week, he was 53. This week, he's 89, and that's kind of nice. Well, they've had to go through eight different uniform changes <laughs> this week with the guys they brought in, so we'll give them a little slack on that as Douglas kicks off. And moving up to take it is Gross, Tyrone Gross. And Gross with some room, gets up across the 40, close to the 45, right around the 44. Nice return from the man from Eastern Oregon, Tyrone Gross, who had a couple of seasons in and out of the San Diego Chargers camp. That's one of the things you really like. Watch what Gross does. He goes straight up the field. He's not looking to really dodge anybody. Now he sees the opening. The only guy he really has to beat is the kicker, and the kicker saves the touchdown. And so first to 10 from their own 44, and they'll try to get something on the ground, and they find nothing, absolutely nothing there. Norman Lejeune coming up to lead the way and uh, make a nice stop. One of those guys in the secondary that has had a little bit of NFL experience, although overall only eight guys have had what would be true NFL experiences. Charles Ali goes out, and Sapp will come back in at fullback. They just can't afford to waste this great field position. Barkley the lone setback on second and 12. And again, they'll keep it on the ground and there's nothing doing there. And just let me get, go back to the, uh, to the rule with the defensive linemen. They have four down linemen and three linebackers and all four down linemen have to have their hand on the ground. Only one other player can blitz, or Red Dog, or whatever you want to call it. But he has to declare himself, basically. He has to be a guy set in front of the umpire. And you just take a look at, look at the defense now. You see the four guys that are down. Kenny, those are guys all, they're getting great penetration. Here comes a linebacker to the outside. I don't know that you're allowed to fake. Third and 13, under pressure, he makes the completion to Cottrell, who gets across midfield. It's Gent, rather, Ronnie Gent, who made two big catches last week and becomes a go-to guy here on third down. And Quinn Gray coming up with a needed completion. 
Uh, Quinn Gray, I mean, he just stepped up. <laughs> He's good. You're going to get pounded. You know that. And that was Cooper that hit him, number 93. You're going to get hit. But you've got to get the ball to the outside. That was really a good throw in recognizing the defense. And here you are. They're going for it on fourth down. Oh, no, I thought they were. I thought they were lined up and, and run a fake here. They still came up two yards short after that 12-yard completion on third down, so they'll have to kick it away for the second time. Aaron Horn to kick it away. Sams is standing back, and he will let this one roll, and giving chase is Paul Pratt, and he came close to downing it. And there is why Cottrell loves this guy. That's why he made the team. He walked on, and... They loved him and they kept him. He gave good chase, but couldn't down it. And so they'll start from their own 20. And Bob Pratt, what happens is he sees the ball that's going to hit him in the back. Now watch what happens. He knows now he tried to hit it back, but he's in the end zone. He can't touch the ball now. And he knew it. They lead it 7 0, and California goes on the attack when we come back. Welcome back to AT&T Park in San Francisco, California, up 7-0. I'm joined by New York's leading rusher, LeBrandon Tofield. LeBrandon, you are dressed but not expected to play. Talk about your injury. Uh, it's an AC joint sprain. Uh, you know, it was a game-time decision. And, uh, you know, I just left it up to the trainers and the coaches. And, you know, and uh, I don't know, it, it was just up to them. I mean, I, I feel pretty good right now, uh, hoping they change their mind and let me play, you know. <laughs> But, you know, it was up to them, and, and the trainer said no. So, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll be the biggest cheerleader we got. Chris Barclay comes in to replace you. Describe his running style. Uh, I mean, Barclay, he's he more of a scat back. You know, he's, he's fast. He's quick through the hole. Uh, but, you know, we got a lot of guys that can, you know, go in and get the job done. Uh, you know, uh, Tyrone. Uh, we got... Uh, you know, everybody. Everybody can go in and get the job done, so it, it doesn't really matter who they put in. Okay, thanks, LeBron. And Kenny, back upstairs. Corey Ross with the carry and uh, lost a yard. It'll be second and 11. The ball at the 19 of California, and they look so smooth in that first series to drive all the way in and score with the short game, Paul. I told you the defense is going to sit back because they've never see, seen or heard this guy before. They don't know what kind of cadence he uses. They don't know what his tendencies are. And on that last play, it looked like they've adjusted a little bit. Gabriel, top of your screen, they fake the reverse, the throw over the middle, and complete to Joe West, the leading receiver on the team, one of the few that survived the wholesale chain, and he hauls it in for a first down. Well, I'm going to tell you, this is, a, this is a fantastic throw by McMahon. Watch this. Watch him step up. He almost gets hit right here. But he steps up to the inside. That was the linebacker, Williams, that was coming after number 51. And a perfect throw. 17 on the play. It's first and 10 at 236. Ross alone set back. Again, flips it out short, and it is dropped right there for the usual sure-handed Nate Lowry, the tight end, former starter for the Cincinnati Bengals, not able to haul this in. You know, I just, I, I really, I can't say enough about the play calling from the bench because what they're doing with McMahon is they're not, uh, really not allowing him first right now to go deep. But I got to believe the way there's those little short passes to the outside, they got to be setting up something down, downfield. Second and 10 at the 37. McMahon, good protection again, and on the money again to the 45. And Shackelford gets close to midfield. The ball is loose, but it was already whistled down. Down around the 48-yard line. Sonny Shackelford making the catch. He had a pair of catches last week and brings this one in for another first down. Mike, Covers 12 yards. Mike McMahon has been on target on every single one of his throws. Watch how fast this ball gets here. Shackelford just he makes the move comes back you know it looks like McMahon has been playing for years Boyd had 92 yards in the total game last week McMahon's going to get that maybe in the first quarter first and 10 at the 49 they'll keep it on the ground to John David Washington just in the game and he gets inside New York territory to around the 46 Washington out of Morehouse College has uh, seen action five carries previous to this. He picks up six on that before being brought down by Simeon Rice. 
Well, you know, it, it, and here you are on first down, you run the ball, you pick up six yards. It opens up your entire playbook. Now they can do anything. Play action passes, little even short pass, or take a shot deep. Second and six at the 45. Two tight end formation. They try to go right up the middle and find very little room that time for Corey Ross. And among those, Save is blocking up the hole rather quickly in there. And another nice play by Brian Save. You know, one thing about the, these defensive linemen, you don't see stunts and things that they're doing. They get, they line up in a position and they take a gap. So it, one of the hardest things I think that, that, that you could do in, in the UFL is to run the ball up directly up the middle because you, there's just too many people there. Third, about six, ball at the 46. McMahon under pressure by Rice, steps up, dumps it off. It is complete, a short gain. I am by Dejo, comes in and gets it. <laughs> but Simeon Rice, he just absolutely amazes me. I mean, he teed off, and they're trying to block him on the outside with the well. And here comes, just take a look to the right of your screen. You're going to see Simeon Rice. He almost gets to the quarterback, and you can see he was going after the throwing arm. But, you know, you know, he already beat a guy, and, and you're fighting a guy that's probably about 60 pounds more than you. But Simeon Rice, even at his age, doesn't quit. We mentioned a couple of names from the past, don't we, Rice? And I am Badejo coming in and uh, taking that one on the run out of the backfield. Coming up short, they will kick it away. UBC, UBC! But hangs up high. They're going to let it roll, and it goes into the end zone. And New York will take over at the 20. So another chance here for Quinn Gray and company when we come back. The beautiful city. And tonight in San Francisco, the California Redwoods make their home opener. They lead it 7-0 over the New York Sentinels. UFL action on HDNet. And you can purchase individual tickets for UFL games by simply going to UFL dash football.com for group tickets call 877 UFL 2009 still a long way to go in the season unless you're probably playing in the games but still five more regular <laughs> season games to go leading up to the championship and here comes Quinn Gray leading the Sentinels on the attack on first and 10 from their own 20 so far in the game he's one for three for 11 yards and one of the things that I'm saying is that the California team they're beating their defensive line they're beating the offensive line to the ball uh, they're getting penetration there's just been no place to run Barkley is a setback Gray throwing on first down and has a completion out to the 25-yard line, wasting no time and getting his second completion. And this is to Corin Robinson. Robinson, the former pro bowler for the Vikings, back in action and makes his first UFL catch. And Robert Herbert is the guy that's covering him. And this is the guy that Dennis Green said he really likes this kid as a corner. He said he's going to be a hell of a player. And that is one tough guy to stop. So, we, you know, we're having a little bit of old home week here now, Paul, with Corn Robinson coming into the lineup after missing last week. Well, one of the things about Corn, the reason he missed him last week, he's got a little arthritis in his knee. Pickup of seven, second and three at the 27. On the ground, and that fools no one as Barkley is met and brought down and shooting in there. Uh, making the hit is Crum and Phillips. Now let's check in on the sideline with Natalie for an injury update. What's going on, Nat? Yeah, Kenny, two starters out of tonight's game already for California and one on each side of the ball. In that first series, California, John Abadi received a concussion. He's going to be out for the rest of the game. And the free safety, Ray Bass, has injured his left quad and will also be out for the night. Kenny? All right, Natalie, thanks. And on third and six at the 24 for Florida. Gray throwing, completion, and a first down. And again, he goes to Corn Robinson. You have a feeling this guy can become his favorite receiver very quickly. Yeah, but if I were if I were he, I would get rid of the ball a little bit sooner than he did. I'd say Quinn Gray gets hammered 
in that backfield, and there's a little scuffle back there. Look at look at Quinn Gray. He stays, he stays, he stays, and then he gets slammed. Watch this. There is the shot that Cooper, Chris Cooper, puts on him, and Quinn Gray goes, wait a minute, where are you guys coming from? Cooper and Phillips. Phillips is the guy that made the stop on a running play. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 up to the 39. And New York will take a timeout. That is their second timeout of this half. California leading 7 0. New York getting a drive going. You know, Kenny, I talked in the beginning about running the ball. You have to run the ball to be able to throw the football. Well, New York. Right now, the 39 seconds left to go in the first quarter. They are minus five yards rushing. And that's not going to get it done. And on first and 10 at the 39. They'll keep it on the ground, trying to sweep out and getting just about a yard. And that shows how tough it's been as Robert Herbert comes up and nails Barkley as he was trying to turn the corner. And instead, he runs right into Herbert. Well, now I know why Dennis Green really likes this guy. He said this kid's a tough kid. Not only does he play the pass extremely well, but when, he, when you see him come up, look, look at the corner's support. This is a big guy, Herbert. He's 6'1", 210 pounds, playing corner. Final seconds. Will they get this playoff? Five seconds to go here in the first quarter. And they do, and they go on the ground. And shooting through is Sap. Cecil Sap rips a nice run off the best so far of the night for New York before finally being brought down by Underwood. So Cecil Sap, maybe that is a harbinger of things to come. We'll see for New York. Will they be able to move the ball as we start the second quarter when we come back? Back inside AT&T Field in San Francisco where the California Redwoods have already scored. Coach, you made a lot of changes to your team this past week, playing well on defense, and obviously your offense already scored. What do you think of the team's play? Well, I think we just have a stronger sense of urgency. We were probably a little bit too young to play a team like, like Las Vegas. And, and New York and, and Florida. So I just think we're a little bit older now, a little more experience. Uh, I think our sense of urgency is better. Uh, we need to run and pass the ball a bit better. And defensively, this drive now with first down is going to be important. Thank you very much for your time. Kenny, get back to you. All right, thanks, Natalie. I think he's got to be very happy with his quarterback. I mean, really, that's a decision he made. It was all on him. He just said, hey, you know what? If you can't get the job done, Shane Boyd, I'm going to put another guy in. He did, and Mike McMahon has done a great job so far. We start the second quarter, first and 10 for New York. They're in California territory. And a nice crisp pass out in the flat. And Corin Robinson hauls it in for his third catch in this drive. And obviously, Gray has found the target that he's been looking for. They pick up nine on that. But you also see the respect that Corin Robinson demands. I mean, you're not going to get up and jam him. You're going to play a little bit cautious with this guy because not only is he a big target, He's got great skills. He's got, I always thought he had tremendous hands. Two-time pro bowler. And it's now second and one. Ball down to the 34. Barkley lone setback gets the carry up the middle. Our first penalty flag is thrown as he gets it down to around the 24. And it's thrown in that vicinity, Paul, that uh, you can almost always say. Holding offensive line. That is the, that is the true vicinity. <laughs> when, it, uh, when that flag comes out that fast, you know the only other thing that that possibly could be would be a face mask on alignment. But you got about 99% of the time, it's holding. And Teddy Cottrell is not too happy. Boy, it's holding right in the, in the middle line. Just take a look at the, the defensive lineman, number 91 is Phillips who's been in the backfield most of the night. He's the guy that was held was held on the play. You know, for the second straight week, we had a penalty-free first quarter. Our first flag of this game. Oh. Uh, and there will be more. <laughs> second and 11, <laughs> back to the 44. The throw, the catch, and they make it up big to Steve Sanders for a first down, and Quinn Gray stepped right into that and put it right on the numbers of Sanders, who had two catches last week. Isn't it amazing how good a quarterback can be when you get protection? Now take a look at this. 
Quinn Gray has got protection. He just goes down the seam. Steve Sanders is wide open, and the ball is delivered on time. They pick up the first down, first and 10 down at the 27. And keeping it is Gray. Gray hits, spins forward, gets about three on that to the 24. <laughs> Quinn Gray, you got to learn something, son. You don't go running in up to a hole and then turn your back because they're going to kill you. I mean, you better, if you're going to do anything, you get the ground, get down. Quinn Gray gets the ball, he fakes it, keeps the ball, runs into the hole, and as he gets to the hole, turns his back. You're just begging to get hammered. Prince Quatine, the linebacker in on the play, is probably maybe a little startled by that. Hey, the guy's turning away from me. It is second and seven at the 24. And they'll go straight ahead. And Charles Ali is the ball carrier. Just finished up with the Browns. He was in their camp a bit, played 28 games over two plus seasons in Cleveland. You know, and you look you look at uh, Teddy Cottrell's team. I mean, they've only rushed for, what, 17 yards in this ball game. But the one thing he is not going to do is not going to get away from the running game. He knows that he cannot win this football game unless they can establish some type of running. There's Thorpe that comes out. He he got had four catches last week. He hasn't even seen the ball tonight. Thorpe, the man that had the touchdown catch last week on the first series. It is third and three, ball at the 20 in motion is Sanders makes the catch and has another first down very close to it and Prude comes up to make the tackle well this is a nice play uh, Sanders comes flying out of the out of the backfield and watch Prude you talk about a good tackle in the open field that's a corner tackling and but the, uh, they got the first down picked up four that's uh, what they needed first and ten at the 16. And certainly the best that Quinn Gray has looked, it seems, Paul, since that first series last week down in Florida. Exactly. I mean, he's now, he has confidence, and they're giving him some time to throw the ball. On the ground, Barkley, no room on the left side. And Pernell Phillips, we mentioned that name again. How active has this guy been coming in to help back up Jason Stewart? Uh, on the line for California, both coaches talking about trying to keep fresh guys in on the defensive line in this game. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, these guys, even though they're, they're, they're not very experienced and they're not older guys, but you've got to keep turning these guys over. Second and 10. Good protection. Dumps it over the middle. Complete inside the five. And he hits Trafonzo Thorpe. Thorpe, the man who had two big catches last week, including a touchdown. We mentioned him. He was just on the sideline. He's back in, and he makes a great catch and gets it down to the three. Just remember, I said he hadn't made a catch yet. <laughs> and, That's I all. mean, just take a look at this pattern. You get a clear out by Sanders on the top side. He goes to the corner, and it pulls the safety with him and allows Thorpe to get underneath. 13 on the play, first and goal. Gray trying to tie it up. They'll keep it on the ground and try to ram it right up the middle with Cecil Sapp, and he gets nowhere. Yeah. Sapp's had the best run so far tonight, too, for him. Yeah, them. he has. And the one thing that you know that, that you just, in, in this division now, the way these guys are, uh, your young people, they're very active in the defensive line and the offensive line, and it's very difficult. And here, take a look at this play. It's very difficult to just rear back and say, I'm going to run the ball straight at you. Well, you got every guy that's in a gap. And if you can't get him out of that gap, there's no place for you to run. Plus, you got the middle linebacker sitting in there. If you're going to do something, I would do something to the outside. Sapp stays in as a lone setback on second and goal at the three. Fires it out. Touchdown. That easy for New York. Barkley goes out as the wide receiver, and Chris Barkley hauls it in for his first touchdown. Well, Kenny, they had three guys on the uh, wide on the outside, and what they did is they brought, watch, see the three guys on the top side? Now watch Barkley. He's going to come out. The guy from all the way in the inside, and they got excellent blocking by Steve Sanders, number 12 on the outside, and Barkley just walks in. Barkley making that one look easy. Now the chance to tie. 
and Peter Check does, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. 14 plays, 80 yards, eating up almost nine minutes of clock. And it's Quinn Gray, his second touchdown pass of the season to Barkley to tie it. Back in San Francisco, where New York just tied it off after a long drive. Quinn Gray, boy, did you guys need that long sustained drive, finishing it up with a touchdown pass. Describe the scoring play. It was just a read. Uh, they had three on our three out there, and we knew we could outflank them uh, in certain situations. So it was just a matter of me reading what the defense was giving to me and just taking it. Quinn, thanks for the time. Kenny, back upstairs. All right, thanks, Ron. And Gray coming in when uh, Ron and all of us were talking to Teddy Cottrell, and, you know, how, how about Gray and how was the mood with everybody last week? Because it seemed like a team that got a little tired. And it was very humid in Florida, but it was a tired team for New York in the second half. But I really like what Coach Cottrell said. He said, I'm going to tell you now, this is my quarterback. My quarterback is not going to be changed. Quinn Gray is the guy that I picked, and I'm going with him. And, and look what happened. The first series of downs, it was horrible. After that, he's been fine. Peter Check kick, kicks off to B.J. Sams. Moves up at the 15. 20, 25, and will go right to about the 25 yard line. Sam's the former Ravens and Chiefs. Returns at 12, and Mike McMahon and gang going on the attack once more. McMahon, 7 of 8, 47 yards, and a touchdown on that very first series to Kai Brown. As you take a look at his numbers here. And then Quinn Gray able to respond. You know, that's, that's very impressive, but I, I, I'm still waiting for them to, to turn this guy loose. In the 15-yard range and back to, back to the line of scrimmage, he's been very accurate. I just want to see him throw deep. And on first and 10 at the 25. Sets up, good protection. He is going deep down the sideline. Incomplete. Slam, right? Going for Joe West, who's the top receiver on the team, and battle was there, step for step below. Terrell Mays is the one that breaks it up. Well, I said I'm waiting for him to go deep. He just did. You know, it's just a matter of time. He got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside with Mays, and just take a look at the throw. The throw was a little bit late. If the ball would have been a, just thrown a little bit further, West would have had a chance, but he had to turn his back to come back to the ball, and Mays was there to knock it away. Second and 10. Delay on the handoff. Ross will take it up the middle. Out to the 29, a pickup of five on the carry, and Rice in there to bring him down. I just like all of the play calling that we've seen so far with California, and again, also with New York on that last series that they had. But, you know, here's a young man that they call in the plays in, and, you know, Mike McMahon is told every time, and I don't think... I didn't, we didn't get a chance to ask Dennis Green about it because he had the ability to audibleize. I think he may be on some place, but not all. Third and two at the 32. Rolling in the pocket. Now under pressure comes back. McMahon looking and still on his feet, and now he will go down. McMahon bought some time, but you can only get so much, and he ran out of room there as Save, one of the first in, along with Wallet, pressure on. Hey, <laughs> Michael. McMahon, let me explain something to you, son. You're not that fast, okay? So if you see an opening, take it. Don't. You're not a dancer. And at that time, it looked like he might have had a shot had he keep had he kept going upfield, but he didn't. He decided I'm gonna put a move. Watch this. I'm gonna make a move. Wrong. Feet don't fail me now, and they did. And so they will kick away. And Barkley stands back to receive. Frost. Little bounce. And picked up at the 22. Nice return. Up to around the 38. This is a... Uh, a new kind of dancing here in the United Football League. One that loses yardage. A gorgeous evening in the city by the bay, and it's 7-7. The Redwoods and Sentinels tied up here with 7.25 to go in the first half. 
Two teams coming in in need of a win. Identical, almost identical openings. They had double figure leads and they blew it and wound up getting blown out by double figures. We talked in the pregame about how tight this could be and it's kind of living up to the billing. They're almost equal in everything, including dead on on the scoreboard. Exactly, they each have, uh, well the Sentinels have 100 yards total and California has 105. <laughs> you can't get any more even than this thing is. And Quinn Gray started out 0-2. He's completed seven straight passes as they began first and 10 at their own 38. Gray, good protection, will dump it over the middle and make the completion to Barkley. Barkley has the first down across midfield, goes oh, out oh, at the 49-yard oh, oh, oh. line. So Chris Barkley becoming a weapon out of the backfield. He's already caught a touchdown pass and picks up 13 what? yards and a first down. But the thing about it is, it is now Quinn Gray has some time. And you, when you have the confidence in your offensive line, then you know that you can stand back there and wait. Because Barkley was not, not the first or second receiver. He was the third receiver coming out of the backfield. And he's a check guy, check down, and he hits him. Total yards now, California is just two more than New York. New York is being able to do it though through the air with 90 total of passing yards. They go to the ground this time and will lose a couple. Met and driven back and everyone's getting involved in the action there including Liam Ezekiel, number 44, coming up from the middle linebacker spot and pushes back Chris Barkley, and you can see it unfold here. Yeah, just take a look at the middle of the line of scrimmage, and Ezekiel is number 44. He comes a little bit right off the, off the tackle, but everything was already jammed up in the middle. He's just the guy that cleans up. A loss of two. Second and 12 at midfield. Play action. Great throwing, incomplete. Nice coverage by Prude. He was going for Stan Sanders, and Ronnie Prude was right with him. Sanders is looking for a flag on this play, but Prude was, this, this is just an outstanding play by Prude. Watch him go around. He does not put his hands on him. That was just good defense. And, and besides, the ball was thrown a little bit behind Sanders, and he couldn't make the turn because Prude was there. He would have run into him. Third and 12 midfield. Breaking the string of eight completions for Quinn Gray. That last incomplete pass. Gray on third down, sets up, steps up in the pocket, throwing complete first down at the 29-yard line to Grafonzo Thorpe. Well, I just, I just really like the way Gray sets himself. He saw the, uh, the, the, the rush coming. He knew that he had to step up, but he never took his eyes off of Thorpe. Take a look. He's looking to his right now. He knows Thorpe is on the left. Watch the throw. Between all the defenders, he hits Thorpe on the run. First and 10 at the 29. Play action again. Flips it over the middle and off the hands of Ali coming out of the backfield. This ball was almost intercepted. And they say it's Williams again, but I take a look here on the outside. Number 96 is Carrington. He almost intercepts this ball. This is what you call throwing a quick screen. And there's a white shirt there, and your guys are in black. The 6 7. Carrington getting the hand up in his second and 10 at the 29. Great. Throwing deep down the sideline, and it is complete. What a catch! Hauled in by Corn Robinson. And you hear the whole team <laughs> respond. And I got to believe that an all-pro like Robinson has got to be digging that. Well, and what happens is Quinn Gray's trying to get him to the line of scrimmage and run a play so they can't review it. But here's the blue flag is already out. This ball is thrown to the outside. You talk about a perfect throw to Corn Robinson. Quinn Gray, I mean, laid this ball exactly where it had to be. They will review it. But I tell you what, Quinn Gray really impressed me right there. He tried to get that team to the line of scrimmage before Dennis Green could throw, a throw the blue flag out. 
All right, now just remember, you gotta you gotta catch the ball inbounds. One foot down. Is the second one down? No, it's not. No. This is not a catch. And the other thing that's very important about it, you got to maintain possession of the ball when you hit the ground. Had he, but he did do that. But watch, one foot down, the left foot is in, right foot isn't. And there's no such thing as being forced out. Ahmad Trudeau right with him on the coverage. There is no force out. You know, he, and that, that's what Corey Robinson's down there talking to the official. He said, you know, wait a minute, I was forced out. No such thing. He did maintain possession, but he didn't get two feet down. They're going to bring this baby back. But what a great throw. And what can, a great throw. You can just see the confidence in Quinn Gray now. He has completed passes to five different receivers tonight. Well, and, you know, that that just shows his confidence, again, in his offensive line. And, you know, he did have protection in the, the first series of downs, but he just missed people. He got his feet underneath him. The receiver did not come bound inbounds with two feet. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. Ball goes back to the 29-yard line. It'll be second down. California is not charged with a timeout. And they keep their two challenges. And uh, compliments to the quick hands of Dennis Green to get that blue flag onto the field, beating the fast legs of Quinn Cray trying to get his team set up down at the two at that time. That's one of the big differences, you know, between the UFL and the NFL. The blue flag the and the blue red flag. flag. <laughs> <laughs> that distinguishes them. Hey, hey, we got a blue flag. You want red? Go ahead. <laughs> it's now third and ten at the 29. See what they can do now. Ronnie Jett back in at tight end. And actually, Ronnie Jett is set up and is moving over now to the left side. Great. Back, drawing, tipped. Intercepted, and it is. California, the tip drill pays off, and Underwood comes away with it and brings it to the 25. That is why they have the tip drill right there, isn't it? And they're also going to take a look, my friend, at whether Underwood took this off the surface or he caught it in the air. There were three different guys that had a shot at this ball. One more look. One, two, third time the charm. There's the interception. This is the epitome of the tip throw, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, there's a lineman that gets his hand on it. Watch this. Then there's got to watch, watch, watch it. Here goes the first tip right here. All right, that goes up there. Now watch the two linebackers fight over it, and they knock the ball out of each other's hands, and then Underwood just takes it right up. It did not hit the ground. There's no challenge or anything. That was just a solid interception by Underwood. Robert Herbert, Norman Lejeune, Morrell Williams, all with hands on it, and the man that secured it, Parker Bell Underwood. Here's, here's your highlight. Here's your highlight for this team. That's the highlight right there, and it slowed down a very strong and gaining confident New York offense led by Quinn Gray. Under five minutes to go in the first half, and Mike McMahon and company go to work once again. Ross, a little hesitation in the backfield, and works his way back to the line of scrimmage. See, here's the situation. When you get a big turnover like they just got California, take a shot at them. Take a shot. Downfield, do something, because they're a little disorganized, and, and, and you know, they're getting their defenses. We get back onto the field. Take a shot. Second and ten, two receivers to the left. McMahon going that way and just a little behind Doug Gabriel. You know, it, it, the ball was a little bit behind, but I thought it was, it was an outstanding throw. And Gabriel's going back saying, hey, my fault, my fault. All Gabriel had to do was turn, turn his body. Watch where the throw is. If you're going to get one hand on it, you can get both of them. Watch him turn. If he had turned his body, he would have had a better chance of catching the football. Gabriel, one of the eight guys who joined the team this week. And one of the three receivers. And he remains in on third and ten. Big man, deep drop. Throwing again for Gabriel. It is broken up. Nice defensive play 
by Terrell May in time that he has broken up a pass in this game. And Paul Pratt almost got him an interception, but his second, second interception. Here's another tip ball. Watch this. This ball's going to be tipped. What 37 is Paul Pratt? Almost gets the ball. And so it's three and out. And Derek Frost will kick away once again. Brian Bonner stands back this time. Bonner moves up, takes it at the 35 to the 40. 45 up to the 48. Good field position for New York. 3.55 to go in the first half. Sometimes the ball bounces your way if you have the right set of hands. Back here in San Francisco, tie score. Sentinels getting ready to come on the attack with 3.55 to go in the first. There's Simeon Rice talking to Teddy Cottrell in, in, in the break, and he's just saying, you know, I, you know, if I, I can get up the field, I can, I can beat this guy. I'm putting some moves on him. We got to get somebody else putting some pressure on the other side. There's Rice, a pair of tackles. Rice and Cottrell, they could put on a few defensive clinics. Grimmies <laughs> Barkley gets it and carries it across midfield and gets back into California territory. Sentinels have one timeout remaining as the clock ticks down to 3.40 to go here in the first half. Barkley's already caught a touchdown pass. Lone score here for the Sentinels. New York 111 passing yards compared to 45 for California in this game. Quinn Gray a little bit of a rough start but he has settled right down and had two good drives and he'll keep it on the ground again to Tyrone Gross and Gross around the right side and Robert Herbert is right there and that's again when Teddy Cottrell was talking about Herbert. You know, when you, when you look at a corner, you, you know that you, I've got to get a kid. First of all, I'm going to see him if, if he can it, cover. But you take a look at, at Herbert here. That's the third time we've seen this guy come in and lay a lick. And I thought Dennis Green had a great summation of this league and so many things. We talked about a guy like Robert Herbert, how it's about every day as we get ready for third and three here. And he pointed out to a guy named Robert Griffin, who went on to that all-pro career with the Vikings, and Denny knows well he's with him now as a defensive assistant. Gray is throwing deep down the sidelines and in and out of the hands, almost hauled in by Thorpe, by Smith rather. Jamel Smith almost made the catch. Jamel Smith, I mean, it, it kind of looked like there was a little bit of contact, but I like the fact that they're letting him play. Take a look at Jamel Smith. This ball is right to the outside. He's going down. He should have made the catch. And so B.J. Sands goes back, waiting to receive the punt of Horn. And he'll let it go into the end zone. And that's where they'll touch it back. And now California goes on the offense. And, and they have all their timeouts remaining, three timeouts remaining, with 2.15 to go as you look at Smith sitting over the bench. And just to get back with, I think, some great points Dennis Green made was as you know, Paul, so many of these guys come in, and we have a lot of guys who were with the team like 24 hours, and then they went to another team. And he did talk about, in the NFL especially, these guys have to be good every single day. You cannot have a bad day when you're trying to make the team as a free agent, uh, undrafted free agent. He said there's a lot of guys that get you know lost in the shuffle, like Griffith did a little bit before he became obviously the All-Pro, and that's why he's so high on a guy like Herbert. And in, in, the other thing too is when you look at when you look at the players on this on this team, when a guy gets rid of a bunch of players and brings in eight new ones in the second week, you better pay attention. You better learn what your position is. And the one point that he's making to every single one of these guys is this: you are now pros. You are being paid to play a game. You better learn how to play it and play it my way, or you're gone. It's that simple. And McMahon just snapped off a pro pass there, firing it out on the side and hitting Sonny Shackelford. A pickup of eight, second and two, out to the 28. I, say, I like what I've seen with this young man. And they will use a timeout. 
Will California, they'll have two left. Or no, we're at the two-minute warning. This is this game has flown by. We're at the two-minute warning here in the first half, tied at seven. Let's check in once again with Natalie. Well, you know, Kenny, we get all access here, and I was spending some time with Mike McMahon and that new wide receiver, Doug Gabriel. Seems like they're trying to work on their relationship, sitting on the bench, talking together. But the funny thing was, Doug gets up right after their conversation and optimistically says, hey, Natalie, get ready, because we're going to be in our end zone soon. So they're feeling good. That he called you by your first name, Natalie. <laughs> that he did. We interviewed him earlier today, so <laughs> I guess that's why. All right, thank you, Nat. We'll be checking back in with you and Ron over on the New York sideline. As you look at me, man, both coaches were, they were telling us, Paul, how even they think their teams are. They have a lot of the same, uh, you know, frustrations a little bit with having some inexperienced guys, a lot more than the other two teams in the league. We thought it might be an even game, and wow, they did a pretty good prediction on this so far, didn't they? Yeah, yeah when you, uh, the numbers are even. There's Terry Valenti. She is the headlinesman, the first in pro football. And I tell you what, she does a terrific, she really does a terrific job. Two minutes to go in the first half, second and two at the 28 for California. Big man sets up, guns it. First down, Doug Gabriel, who steps out of bounds. There's him again. We talked about a guy that just comes in. He was with Florida and cut by Florida just last week. Then he comes out to California, and he's part of the uh, the, the mass uh, commute uh, coming into this team here in California. Uh, it, the Denny Reed said about Gabriel. He said I wanted him in the first place, but I couldn't get him, and now I got him. I got him in a second shot around. First and ten at the 35. Redwoods with all their timeouts remaining. Drop deep, and he just flips it over to Ross. Ross moving up near the 50 to about the 49-yard line. Nice carry for Ross, picking up about 14 on the play for a first down. Mike McMahon, take your time. You've got three timeouts. You've got a minute and 35 seconds. You've got all the time in the world to put points on the board. Slow it down. They'll hurry up here on a delay. Ross will carry. He's to the 40, gets to the 39. Now, if you want to, if you, if you, yeah, you'll take a timeout now. This will save a lot of clock. You still have two more left. You've got the ball inside their, or around their 40-yard line. This is a nice drive. Again, Mike McMahon throwing the ball exactly where he wants to throw it. He's got a lot of poise. That's free safety trade battle they're looking at now. Trey Battle is number 27, and he's making the tackle. Well, his own man ended up on top. Looked like that was part of the deal. They're looking at his right leg. As you look at Ted Cottrell on the sideline, And he was talking about the progression of a lot of his younger guys. And again, he made a good point, too. The second half, as they, as they continue to look at Trey Battle, he mentioned the second half of his game last week in the loss to Florida. You know, some of these guys were cramping up a little bit. They were getting a little tired so because they hadn't actually been in there in game conditions in a long time, some of these guys. And I think a point we made earlier, the fact that they, they really never did scrimmage in the three right. weeks that they had a training camp. And, and, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, both of these coaches, they've been around a long time, and neither one of them are making excuses for their football player. He said, they're young, they're learning, they're gonna learn as, as we go along. And I, you know, what better guys can you have to, to teach them than these two guys, Teddy Control and Dennis Green? I mean, they know what's going through these guys, you know, that they didn't really get a chance in the NFL. They were there uh, for a short period of time, as cannon fodder, most of them. Yeah. And now they're giving them a chance to play football. Battle walked off on his own power over to the sideline. You wonder about the rhythm now for McMahon, who completed three straight passes. This play resumes first and 10 at the 40 of New York. McMahon pops. McMahon going for it all down the sideline, and no in and out of the hands of West. And with him, step for step, was Tony Tiller. <laughs> Yo, I don't, where's McMahon been? Can I, 
Someone tell me where this guy has been. Look at this throw. Look at where the ball is. I mean, that was he was the only one that could catch the football would be West. There was outstanding coverage downfield. But, I, you know, that is the guy that had a chance. Tiller was there. Couldn't make the catch or steal on the ball. Second and 10 at the 40. McMahon has already passed the total or approaching passing the total that Shane Boyd put up in the entire first game. They'll keep it on the ground and Corey Ross will do the heavy lifting once again as he has for most of the carries in this first half. Getting back as we got a timeout now with 104 to go here. Timeout taken here by California. Timeout California. That's the second timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Looking back on that play made by Tony Tiller who was right there step for step in that uh, throw down the sideline to West. You know, Tiller just joined this team about, well, he joined the team about uh, a week ago. <laughs> you know, it's another one of the great stories already of the United Football League. Tiller joined the team, and then he, he was going to dress. He didn't get a dress, so now he's going to dress this week. So we were talking to him a couple of days ago, and he said, yeah, I finally dressed out and started practicing a little bit, and I'm ready to go basically about 72 hours before the game. I said, this ever happened before? He said, yeah, in Canada about three years ago, I was playing in the CFL, and I got picked up by a team on uh, Thursday and Friday night I played. So I'm ready for this, and obviously he was as he made great coverage in that uh, play just a moment ago as we pick it up now, third and fourth and 34. McMahon under pressure, unloading, and it is deflected. Good defense by New York. They make the stand. You know, it's kind of amazing. It's, it's you, you, you've said that same statement, not, not that they were picked up by another team played the next day, but they were picked up and playing today, like this week and last week, for with about eight or nine different guys. I mean, these you're going to see guys that are playing tonight. Now, New York has a bye this next week. There may be some of these guys gone if they don't win this football game. And they'll bring other guys in. Second. A fourth down and four at the 34. McMahon, good, good uh, protection, but it was through the hands, and there is a flag. Glenn Holt just into the game, one of the new receivers. It goes off his hand and double coverage and a flag is thrown. And it's going against the defense, against Terrell Mays. An illegal contact. And Teddy Cottrell, the man. The guy missed the ball. <laughs> but this is a great break. All right, Terrell Mays is number 34. The contact was made way before the ball was thrown. And we got our first look at Glenn Holt, another one of the receivers picked up just this week. So it goes from fourth and four to first and 10 at the 29 with that penalty. McMahon sets up, dumps it off over the middle. Ross has it. He's to the 15 and brought down by battle. And a little shove, no you, no you, after the end of that tackle. 14 yards on the play, 36 Double seconds to go. 34 on the defense, five yard penalty, first down. And another flag in there for five more. On Mays. Correction, penalty is declined. Yeah, but it still was another penalty on Mays for illegal contact. I mean, you, you talk about, there's no, to me, there's no such thing as a real good penalty. But on the play before with battle, on, on, it was fourth down, pass was incomplete. And. It's illegal contact. It's first and 10 at the 15. 36 seconds to go. Redwood still have one timeout remaining. McMahon pumps. He's under pressure and he goes down. They finally are able to put the pressure on and get to McMahon. A nice job throughout the night. But Save is the one that gets the sack. And again, you can throw the ball away in this league. Man, get rid of the ball. Lose seven, back to the 22. Throwing, intercepted. Floated that one up and it was picked off by Tony Tiller. Bet he's glad that he joined the team this week. Yeah, he's, and they're glad he joined the team, but I'm gonna tell you something, this was a bad pass. 
This pass was thrown by Mike McMahon, and there were four black shirts down there. Take a look at the black shirts that are in the area. There is just no chance for the receiver to catch the football. And take a look. I mean, it just, it was a, a Gabriel had no chance on that on that ball, and Tiller takes, takes the interception. I mean, I, I don't understand the throw, and neither does Dennis. At worst, you figure they get field goal position. Now they go and come away with nothing, and McMahon has not made many mistakes in this game, and he makes a big one near the end of the first half. So we thought it'd be even, or at least close. I'm going to say we predicted even, but it is even. It's seven, it's seven. We can't get any closer, Paul. And I, I tell you, it was a very entertaining first half. They're wondering what, what Mike McMahon would do. He stepped up very well and, and did the job. The only time that he panicked, I think, was the last two plays of this drive. And he was trying to hurry up offense. He should have thrown the ball away because there's no intentional grounding, and then he threw the interception. Let's check in with Ron Kruk, Ron. Okay, thanks, Kenny. Head coach Ted Cottrell, your defense gave up a touchdown on the first possession and then shut them down the entire way, including that last interception. Evaluate the defense. Well, I thought after, as I said, to say, Ron, after the first drive, uh, guys settled down. We started playing some pretty good ball and uh, start executing, executing, and uh, we came with some big plays. And that was a huge play right there at the end of the half. That uh, big takeaway. We got to get a few more of those. You said that the running game would be a key in this game. You only have 27 yards on the ground. How do you get that going in the second half? Well, we just got to keep working at it because we're not going to abandon the run because that sets up all our play action passes and all. And and uh, we got to find out. I, I saw from myself we're missing a few blocks. And, and so we'll get that corrected. Okay, thanks for the time, Coach. All right, Ron. Okay, Kenny, Paul, back upstairs. All right, good stuff, Ron. And we'll see and maybe hear again from Ted Cottrell, possibly in the locker room in a few minutes. Uh, I guess he's got to be fairly happy with the way everything's going. It's been a fun game to watch. California comes out, and coming right back is New York. And like two fighters round by round. It's 7-7 at halftime. We get ready for the second half. 7-7, California and New York tied up. And we will start the second half with California receiving the ball. You see the AT&T field. It's laid out from the left field foul line. And the other end zone is right about where home plate would be. The pitcher's mound is right about the 10-yard line. And they really have done a nice job, I think, with this field to convert it over for football. Not a lot of baseball, football fields shared now like there was once upon a time. Peter Check will kick off, and B.J. Sams awaits the kick. Sams from his six. The 20 dances around and comes down right at the 22-yard line as Brian Bonner is there for the tackle. Now, what's one thing that's unusual about this league? You see the four guys down on your left-hand side? That's called a wedge. You're only allowed to have a two-man wedge. But watch what California does. They're going to slip a third guy in. And that's illegal. They could throw a flag there if they wanted to, or if they really read it, because you're only allowed to have two men in the wedge, and that's a safety thing. 18 yards on the return. At first and 10, they mark it at the 24. As McMahon goes on the attack, and Shackelford and Gabriel are in as receivers. Ross in the backfield. McMahon looking to the left under pressure from Rice, throwing, and it's intercepted. Terrell Mays picks it off, feeling the heat from Simeon Rice. Boy, this is really Simeon Rice. I mean, it, it, this is Llewellyn, number 77, is trying to block him man to man. And Simeon Rice gets in the face of McMahon, and McMahon throws the ball up in the air, and Mays is the guy that intercepts it. Watch this. Here comes Simeon. In his face, he throws the ball away. Now, there is a situation. If you're going to throw the ball away, throw it out of bounds. Don't throw it up in the air for grabs. And McMahon's last two passes have been picked off. And vintage Simeon Rice. <laughs> he knows it, doesn't he? And now here comes Quinn Gray. Great field position. Drops back, pitches it over there, and has a completion. Ali with it, draws the crowd, losing his helmet. 
uh, moving in on that was Jason Stewart. <laughs> that was only a helmet, folks, <laughs> for those watching at home. Jason, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big man, 320, and I think you can add some more. Yeah, he's listed at that. He played a couple of years, you know, on and off with the Colts, played some arena football. They pick up six, second, and four. And they'll keep it on the ground, and it appears they've got the first down with Barkley. Let's check in with Natalie. Half time, Coach Green was dedicating himself to telling his players to switch their cleats. The equipment manager were, were moving around more busy than a lot of the other players. Basically, the D-backs, the receivers, everyone needed to change because the ground is wet. It does have something to do with the fact this is a baseball diamond, and they had to bring in sod to take the baseball diamond and turn it into a regular field. And so, as you can tell, the players are struggling a little bit, but happily, the cleats are helping out. All right, thanks, Natalie. First and 10. As we get back to action, and, and Dennis Green had, he didn't have a concern as much, I think, as a curiosity when we talked a couple of days ago with him. How would this field be, the baseball surface, uh, and, you know, especially with having to put the new grass in where the infield is between the 40 and this is Barkley carrying over on the right side, and we'll get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe pick up about a yard. Ron, you got anything to add there uh, in this uh, field report? Well, they were working on the field, there's no doubt, at halftime, but I'm with the guy who just made the interception, Trell Mays, and do you have to give Simeon Rice a little credit on that one with the quarterback pressure? Oh, yeah, every time a uh, secondary makes a play, it's all about the guys in front of us, D-line, linebackers. It's never just one guy doing it by himself. Terrell, thank you very much. Kenny? Tell you, Ron, Terrell did a nice job keeping his feet in bounds. He didn't have any traction problems hauling in that interception and staying in bounds. Second and eight at the 31. On the draw with it is Barkley, and Barkley is brought down. Moving in is proved to make the tackle. The one thing, I, tell you, I really like the fact that we have access to the players during the course of the ball game, and, a, and the players are all right with that. If the players and the coaches weren't all right with it, it'd be a different thing. But now you got a chance to talk to a guy after he makes a big play, and they really want to be on. Now you see Barkley on that play. I mean, that was just outstanding blocking by the offensive line. But I like the fact that, that we can we can talk to these guys anytime during the ball game, including the coaches. Picked up seven on that alone, and it makes it third and three down at the 26-yard line of California. Remember this drive started after Mays got the interception, giving him great field position. Gray backs away, didn't like it. He'll take a timeout. We got a break, 12.09 to go here in the third. Simeon Rice put the pressure on. Force the turnover, get New York capitalized. Tied at seven, coming up on a third and three at the 26. Dennis Green, Ted Cottrell, of course, we know Denny Green had the great success as an NFL head coach, college head coach. Ted Cottrell has been, he's been like the go-to assistant guy, the defensive genius. Uh, now getting his chance to be a head coach, we're gonna talk more about the way he is delegated with these guys as we look at a Third and three, and a flag movement on the line. Ezekiel, 60 offense, five yard penalty, third down. Ezekiel number 44, the linebacker, the middle linebacker, faked like he was going to run a blitz, and then they just moved at the line of scrimmage. That was just a nice. That was a nice play by the defense. Watching a little bit of left of your screen, you see 44 Ezekiel Hill come in to the inside, and then Metter just moves, and he went, oh no, man. <laughs> uh, third and eight at the 31. A sport for young and old alike. In a familiar situation, third and eight. Do you go to the air? Usually, yes. Gray looks, firing over the middle. Incomplete into double coverage. He was going for Sanders. Herbert was there along with Lejeune to break it up. Outstanding defense. And, and you know, you take a look at Gray. He's got time to throw the ball. He's got time. He's got time. And then he wants to stick it into Sanders. And there was just no chance of getting the ball in there because Lejeune was there. Makes a play. Peter Check will come on to kick. This will be a 49-yarder. He is two for two on the season. His longest, 42 yards. Out of the hold of Horn, the kick is up. And it comes up short. 
So great field position for the Sentinels after the interception by Mays, but they were held, and this kick comes up short. Still tied at seven. Back in San Francisco, tied at seven. The Redwoods and Sentinels here in the third quarter. And a good look at big number 99 for the home team of Redwoods. Jason Stewart out of Fresno State. Uh, played a couple of seasons with the Colts. Mike McMahon goes back on the attack. He's just won for his last six. His last two passes have been picked off. Settle down, young man, settle down. Well, this is one of the things you really wonder about. You got to change the possession, okay? You got a timeout. You out, you're on the sidelines. Look at Denny Green looking at him. Like, what, I mean, what do you, what do you, what did you talk about when you went to the sideline? You had to have a play and then an alternate play to call. So you get up there at the line of scrimmage after a timeout and waste the timeout. Look at Denny Green. What are you, what are you, say what? You know, there's some of those guys on the bench, when you looked at him, you had to use a wide angle lens because he <laughs> kind of they expand as it goes. Mike McMahon getting his first game action in two years since he was with Toronto in the Canadian Football League, starting tonight in place of Shane Boyd. He has put up over 100, or approaching 100 yards now in passing offense. Coming up on first to 10 at the 31. Deep drop, throwing it over the middle, complete to Gabriel. Gabriel right there, and it was just a nice little cushion right in front of Paul Pratt. I told you at halftime they're gonna run some, when you listen to the lockup, they run some play action passes. This is a play action pass. And this was a perfect throw to Gabriel. He got it over the linebacker in the front of the safety. It's just a perfect throw. Look at him. He's got poise. Now, what? He sees Gabriel making the turn, and look where this ball is placed. I mean, that is just a perfect throw. Picked up 19 on the play. First and 10, 42. On the ground to Ross. Nice move by Ross, cutting back to his left and gets about five on the play. Paul Pratt is in there to make the tackle. Going back to that last play, when you looked at that route again, number 10, Gabriel obviously catching it. The guy running just inside him, number 15, Glenn Holt. Those are the two new receivers that just joined the team about five days ago. Well, then Holt said to Gabriel, where are you going? I'm gonna go right with you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna follow you. I think you've seen the playbook more than me. Second six at the 38. Again on the ground to Ross. Nice block, and Ross gets about four more. Bring up a third and about two at the 38. What a nice play by Mays, the corner man. The cor Mays can't make the tackle, and he knows that there's a lead blocker going to come in after him. Take a look on the right-hand side of your screen. Number 34 is Mays. He takes on the block and makes a Ross turn back inside to the defense. That was just an outstanding play by, by Tim. He's on the ground. He takes the blocker out. He knows he can't make the play. And he makes the, the runner Ross cut back in. Flag on the play. Before we get started, looks like motion. Smells like motion. That means it might be. Motion. Third and eight, the ball goes back to the 40. You look at Denny Green, and, and go back to your conversation. I thought it was very interesting when you asked uh, Ted Cottrell about his defense. And, you know, he's the defensive whiz, and you ask him how he controlled his defense, what his working relationship I said, was. I said, how much do you step in and, and, and help? He said, listen, I hired Don Blackman as a defensive coordinator. I leave him alone. I'll make some suggestions in a meeting before a meeting, but other than that, I had I hired an offensive coordinator, Wes Chandler, and a defensive coordinator, and I left him call the play. Pass completed to Sonny Shackelford, who gets close to the first down. And it's going to be fourth, about four, at the 37. And so, California will be kicking it away once again. Frost to kick. And Bonner will 
received. I'd like to see a, a, a punter kick the ball out of bounds. Either if it's a right footed kicker, kick it out of bounds left. They're so int intent on trying to drop the ball at the 10 yard line. You know how hard that is? Five yard penalty, fourth down. But if he would turn, Frost, and just kick the ball as far as he could, aiming at the 10 yard line, he kicked the ball out of bounds where well, there is absolutely no chance for a return. I know a guy that used to do that for the Buffalo Bills in the AFL. I think he still holds the all-time uh, season average about 42. Three. 43. I don't remember it. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, who counts? But, but you know, what's a yard? 43.2. 43.2. And a half. And always <laughs> seem to find the coffin corner kind of a lost art of punny. This one's hung up, and Bonner will call for fair catch and take it at the seven. And so that's where New York will start. Gwen Gray and company ready to come back on offense, tied at seven. And back here at AT&T Park, home of the San Francisco Giants, of course, and tonight home of the California Redwoods of the United Football League on a gorgeous evening in the Bay Area. And now New York will start. Charles Ali comes to the backfield once again. New York, after the touchdown, they've had an interception, a punt. They turned it over on downs and missed a field goal. That's their last four possessions. First and ten at their own seven. Flips it out. It is caught for just a couple of yards. And there he is, Crafonzo Thorpe. It's been a long time since we talked about him. He had the four receptions last week, one of 54 yards that led to an 11-yard touchdown pass but has been rather quiet he had since one, then. He had one in the first half, didn't he? Yeah, that's and, it. And here's the second one. So they pick up two, second and eight at the nine. On the ground they will go and get absolutely nothing. Barkley was brought down immediately by Thomas. Dontarius Thomas, remember him from the Vikings especially. Well, you know, Thomas on this play, once you commit yourself, go. Watch Thomas commit himself. He's on the outside. He's got the seal the outside. He did it beautifully. Thomas has five NFL seasons. Uh, briefly was in the Bay Area with the 49ers. It brings up a third and 12 back to the five. Gray on a delay. Barkley will keep again. Get about four of that back. Prude, we have said his name quite a bit, and Underwood getting up there. I don't know of any game that I've done recently where you see so many corners and safeties making tackles. You know, uh, just remember that all four defensive linemen are in a down. They have to have at least one hand on the ground, on the ground. so they're basically rushing upfield. Aaron Horn. Stands deep in his own end zone. Remember, he just joined the team this week because of an injury to Tom Malone. This should be great field position for California. Sams standing back. It is high, it is short. Sams moves up, takes it on the run at the 38 to the 30. Gets to around the 25-yard line. Great field position for the Redwood. And this is what happens when you kick a short punt. When you kick a short punt, the coverage just runs right by you. So Sam just let him go. He went, didn't second for fair catch. And that's a problem when you're running downfield as a cover guy and you're not aware of where the ball is and where the receiver is. He just, these guys just, I mean, it's a short kick. They go right by Sam's. Look at this, Sam just runs up. These guys are, all the black shirts are already by him. Great position for California to start this drive. First and 10 at the New York 25. 6.41 to go in the third quarter. McMahon, play action. Rice gives chase, unloads it, and his short sliding try that comes up just shy intended for Shackleford. Well, the thing that Mike McMahon had to do there, he runs a bootleg and he comes back to the outside. He is basically all by himself. I mean, you know, there's a little pressure from the inside, but he's got to set himself to make that throw. He tried to make about a 35-yard throw on the run 
going to his right. You've got to be able to sit yourself and make a turn so you can get your arm back around. Second and 10 at the 25. Good drop, throw, flag is thrown, complete on the slant to Gabriel. Gabriel's still on his feet. He's inside the 10 and loses the ball. Did New York get it back? They're pointing that way. I remember, though, there is a flag back on the play. Simeon Rice is there saying we've got it, but we'll have some things to sort out here. Well, you know what I think it is? Uh, you know, I, I think there are just too many guys rushing. I, you know, you're only allowed to blitz five. These flags, two two flags came out in a hurry. Tripping but offense look at number 65. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. Number 54, penalties offset. Second down. So after all that, we'll do it again. Yeah, and, and what a great play by Simeon Rice. I mean, that that ball, I mean, this is something he did in the NFL for years, is stripping the, the quarterback with the ball. And, and this time, he just, when you watch him, you're going to see the roughing the quarterback. Uh, you know, unless it's head-to-head -head contact, they really didn't hit him that hard. That well, it's second and 10 at the 25. And Gabriel hands off to Ross. Ross finds room and gets it inside the 20. And moving in to make the tackle is Nathan Williams. We haven't heard a lot from him tonight. He was leading the team in tackles coming into this game. The former star at Murray State, where he was the All-Ohio Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year. And on a third and three at the 18, you see the numbers tonight. New York three for nine, and California doing a little worse, two for seven. Third and three at the 18. Remember after the return by Sams, they took over at the 25 of New York. A great position, and they will take another timeout. Timeout of California. Third, second timeout of half. That's two they burned on this drive. Well, you know, you, last again, you, let's go back. You got young. You got a young team, and if he's not sure, this is this is uh, McMahon's first game. So he is really not sure. When he sees something up there, they got a play call, and he looks and he said, "This play can't work. It just can't work." And I don't have the personnel to get out of it to go to another play. So the smartest thing that I can do, we are in field goal range right now. Let's take a timeout, burn a timeout, and then find out exactly what we're going to do. The thing that got me is when they had to change the possession, they go out on the field. They're already on the sideline for about two minutes. They go out on the field, and then McMahon took a timeout. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Even Teddy Green was kind of shaking his head. What a nice game for Simeon Rice. Uh, Ted Cottrell told us a couple of weeks ago, he said Simeon said he wanted to play. He came in, he ripped off about 225 bench uh, pound on bench press about 18 times. He said, I think you're ready to come back, son. And indeed he has. Third and three at the 18. Throwing complete to Gabriel at the one. Is it a touchdown? Yes, Gabriel. Doug Gabriel in his first game hauls it in. 18-yard touchdown pass from McMahon. Boy, you know, you really don't know how hard this throw is. And what you talk about McMahon, this is an experienced throw. He throws the ball behind the defensive guy, where the only guy that really can get the ball is Gabriel. And he's got the ball. He's looking at the ball. The defensive man is looking at Gabriel. He cuts back inside. The ball is there. He got no help from the safety. He's covering him out there by himself, basically. Now watch where the throw is. Gabriel goes back to the inside. That's experience as a receiver. Tiller with him, battle there. They're going to review this as uh, you might expect. New York side, Ted Cottrell, they're thinking he was hit and his knee was down just shy of that goal line. And I think he has a good case. And I think he's got a great case. That's why I was hesitant to call it because it looked like when he was hit the first time. And we'll take another look at it here, Paul. All right, look where, where uh, when you see now, Gabriel goes back to the inside, okay? The tackle is made there. Where Taylor is his knee is right down? There. Yeah, and see where the ball is? They're yeah. gonna put this ball back on a one yard line. Yeah. This is an outstanding call by Teddy Cottrell because he knows that it's not a touchdown. Watch here, you see the knee down yeah, and the ball down. is at the one. He's down. 
Good call. Outstanding call. There's Tiller Battle coming in to help out. Good eyes over there on the sideline for Tag Patrol and those guys. His hair got in, but the ball didn't. <laughs> We'll address the hair rule later. <laughs> Man, I'm here, here I am, a guy going bald by the minute. I'm talking about somebody's hair. And they put it to the one, a 17-yard pass. No timeout charged. McMahon, three of four for 48 yards. In his last few, passes the last two possessions. He's got a little bit of a rhythm going and certainly one here on this drive. It's first and goal at the one. McMahon spins, hands off, and met and brought down at the goal line. And the ball is loose, and it looks like California has recovered it. And they will stay with it. But Ross is nailed, and he gets it for the touchdown. That is a touchdown. Well, he get what happened is I, I thought this was really dangerous. But watch where he, he'll extend the ball out. Take a look at his right arm. What He's hit here, then his arm comes out. Watch him put it over the goal line. Once that ball touches the it, goal line, Chris it's has to break the plane, and that's what it did. And Mortensen was all over him, but a great play by Ross for the touchdown. The, the rule is if the ball touches the goal line going in, it's a touchdown, as soon as it touches him. But uh, if you're coming out of the end zone, the whole ball has to be out of the end zone and can't be touching the goal line, or it's a safety. It was set up with the passing of McMahon to Gabriel, and then the second effort of Corey Ross. And Ross is able to muscle his way and reach out and put his team in front 14 to 7. Great effort. Back at AT&T Field, where the Redwoods have once again taken the lead. Great pass there, great catch. Seems like you and Mike are starting to build a rapport together, and there was a timeout called before you had that completed pass. Tell me what was said in the huddle. Oh, he was, Coach Cruz came to us and said, we, somebody need to make a play. And all the receivers got together and said, we're going to make it. If we leave it up to us, we're going to do it. That's what we're here for. You know, Brunk is in here to make plays. That's why we're here. We're here to make some plays. Well, that you did. Thanks for your time. No problem. Kenny, back up to you. Thanks, Natalie. And uh, indeed, he did make the play. And then Ross capped it off with his second touchdown of this season. And his first of the game to make it 14 to 7. Well, I'll tell you, you really have to be aware of where you are to stick that ball out on the goal line because everybody's going after it. Well, and you think back to last week, too, when New York fumbled at the goal line. It's got to be in the back of the mind. And, you know, it was close, but he just broke the play, and he got the six. And, and now New York comes back on the attack. And taking his Tyrone Gross. Gross at the 25. Nice little move. Gets out to the 30. And there is where he is brought down. And Lejeune makes the play. You know, one of the things I really like in just the two games that we have done, and you look at the officiating, uh, Florida last week when we did the game uh, didn't have a penalty in the entire ball game. Uh, Denny Green's team only had two. But you look at it, these guys really pay attention. I mean, I like what the officials do. They allow them to play, and something when it's when it's really flagrant, these guys are, these guys are on top of it. I think that they let the game be in the control of the players. Which is the whole purpose, I think, of some of the rules and the protection for the quarterback, and it has worked well. And fumble in the backfield, Gross. Does California have it? Was Gross able to get in amongst the big bodies and take that away? I mean, beneath it all, battling is 5'7", 215-pound Tyrone Gross, <laughs> the smallest man, I think, in that pileup. Well, New York got it back. They lose three yards, but they keep the ball. Second 13 at the 27. And Gross coming in the backfield, Barkley the receiver. 
Herman Parker caught a touchdown pass earlier. Dropping back is great, throwing and incomplete. Intended for Steve Sanders. Well, he had pressure coming up the middle from Ezekiel, number 44. Uh, the middle linebacker, we've seen him twice tonight putting pressure on the quarterback, and he's done an excellent job. Number 44 is gross, so you're going to see him right on the left of your screen. But I tell you what, he got blocked right at the line of scrimmage. Ezekiel is playing a nice game, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, is. he is. It, you know, it, it just, a dirt, it's a different football team, New York and California, with one game under your belt. Third and 13. Gray to throw and his man stumbling. He was trying to go over the middle for tight end Ronnie Gent. Lejeune is in there amongst those trying to cover the big guy. Ronnie Gent got knocked off his stride and he couldn't, you know, maintain. Take a look at him, he's stumbling. Look at here, the ball is thrown. He can't even turn around. He can't get himself, get his composure back. He's almost tripped and fell. And look at Lejeune does not slow down. Making an effort on that, and so uh, Horn will kick it away once again. Four nineteen to go in the third quarter. Sam's moves, takes it at his thirty-five. Outside to the forty, he's at midfield to the forty-five around the forty-two. That is the speed of B.J. Sam's. <laughs> A guy that certainly knows what to do with the ball when he gets it. Well, I'll tell you, Abafami Ian Badejo, number 30, just about killed somebody. Watch on the left left hand side of the screen. Here he comes. Bam! <laughs> Ian Badejo's been waiting for that, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he got up, did a little two-step, and it was kind of nice to see, you know, you, you just you dream about shots like that. And it's a clean shot, his head is in front, and then you say to the guy laying on the ground, you gotta pay attention. Uh, Horn in there, the punter in on that to uh, help out. Ian Badejo, the oldest guy on this team at 34 for uh, California. You don't have that many shots left. <laughs> and a flag's thrown. Five yards, first down. That flag was thrown by Terry Valeni, the female head lines person. Yeah, <laughs> she said linesman was okay with her when Ron Crock uh, talked to her at the start. It's, she's Ron a Crock line person said, now. Okay, and we get back to more politically correct football on first and 15 <laughs> at the 48, and Ross with it, and Ross is brought down. They're trying to pull him back there a little bit, and moving in on the tackle is Harwell. Brought down by Brigham Harwell. Brigham Hardwell, Harwell about. They list him about 350 or so. I want to explain to you what an Orso is. Orso. <laughs> is it Orso is more in it? I think that's more. I would go with more. <laughs> second, second and 13 into 46. McMahon drops, throws complete again to Gabriel, and the ball comes loose incomplete. Doug Gabriel, this ball was thrown on target, and he just got stripped. All right, what? Well, here comes Gabriel across the middle. Watch this, and then Mays just reaches in number 34 and knocks the ball away. That's an outstanding defensive play. Gabriel should have, first of all, should have caught the ball. But look at Mays strip it. That's Mays, good defense. yeah, with an interception already tonight and another broken up pass, third and 13 at the 46. Makes a handoff, throwing, and it's underthrown. Good coverage again. He was going for the tight end, Nate Lowry. And uh, Lowry was matched pretty much stride for stride on that one. Nathan Williams, a linebacker, getting back to help out as well. That's another one of these throws where, where uh, he's trying to throw the ball behind the linebacker. But when you looked at Williams, number 51, he made the play. That was just outstanding coverage. Brian Bonner standing back around his eight yard line. Derek Frost will kick away once more. Three, three, 
Calls fair catch, takes it at the 13. And so we get ready now for New York to go back on offense. Let's check in on the sideline with Ron. Okay, Kenny, thank you very much. At the beginning of the game, head coach Ted Cottrell talked about last week when New York gave up three consecutive touchdowns at the bubble burst. The momentum changed and the guys really lost it. And you get that same type of feeling right now on the New York sidelines. A lot of guys hanging their heads. This is a very key drive to get them back into the game. Kenny? Good point, Ron. Gwen Gray throwing complete out to the 20 and brought down immediately. Thorpe and Prude is in there again to make the tackle. You know, it's not really that, that uh, Gray doesn't have the weapons, because he has the weapons. He's got Thorpe, he's got Robinson, he's got Sanders, he's got Jamal Smith. I mean, he's got people he can throw the ball to. It's a question with him is picking out the guy that's open. And there are people open. Second and two at the 21. Gray handoff. He'll get the first down from Sapp. Ball comes loose, and California has it. And coming away with it is a guy who's been so active, Ronnie Prude. He's been in on every other tackle, it seems, and he recovers the fumble. If there was an exit down there, Ronnie Prude might have taken it. He came all the way down and gave the ball to someone in the stands. That little guy, <laughs> I would, don't give that, that up, son. That Hold is on neat. to that. That is really You neat. bet. <laughs> Ronnie what? Prude was happy, and he just made someone else happy. And everybody's happy on this side of the field with California as right. we see Sapp here carry. All right, Cecil Sapp. Now, see, the thing is, he's hit, and there's a defensive player underneath him. That ball just came out. Lejeune, one of those, I believe, that got in there. Number 27. The guy that stripped that was Thomas, number 56. He got his arm in and knocked the ball out. And there you see Lejeune walking to the sideline. He and Thomas uh, getting in, Prude getting the ball, and California up 14 to 7. Two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. And they've got great field position at the New York 35. And over on the New York sideline, Ron made a good point a minute ago. You just wonder if they've got to be thinking, not another turnover, as Ross gets it. And he is brought down by Williams, shooting up from the secondary. Nice play there by Darian Williams. We haven't heard much from this guy tonight. Uh, one of those tryout guys who made the secondary as a starter. Yeah, there was like 1,080 guys or something that came down for a tryout before the first game of the year. and. Teddy Cottrell said, I got two guys out of that tryout, Paul Pratt, number 37, and Darian Williams. And he said, you know what? They were good enough. I started them in the first game, and they did very well. Pratt got an interception. It's in Williams' uh, makeup, isn't it? His uncle Carl Richardson played for the Dolphins and the Bills. And uh, getting the carry there is Corey Ross. And there's a flag. I think the defenses on both of these teams are playing extremely well. Offense, New York penalty, second down. That's Mabry, that's the center on the hold. I mean, and he's, the center is pretty much uncovered. <laughs> he's exposed, he's, you know, they, I, I love, I love offensive linemen and they hold and they, they shake their head, you know. <laughs> they, I didn't do it. Look at, you think that's not a hold? He pulled him down by the shoulders. It makes it second and 20 and suddenly that fill position Still okay, but not looking great. Back to just shy of the 45. Mabry, what did his grief say? Mabry met Shane Boyd, who was the starting quarterback last week. They met, they started taking some snaps. That's how quick it, uh, they had to work that out. McMahon keeping it. And we'll try to get out of bounds, but not before Nathan Williams comes up to make another nice stop. Well, the first thing you have to learn in the UFL as a quarterback, when you're running and you see a black shirt, get down. Get down. Get down. Get out of bounds or <laughs> get down. Don't hang in the middle. Yeah, it's not worth another yard. Trust me. See that? Get down. That's a linebacker coming after you. Williams? He picked up nine. It's third and 11 at the 36. 
And Dennis Green said eight would have been all right. You didn't <laughs> need that nine. McMahon drops, steps up, some pressure. Rolling to the right, rolling, throwing, and it is caught by Shackelford. No, it they hit the ground. It hit the ground, incomplete. And that was Terry Valenti again on the play. One more look. Pratt on the coverage. Look at this ball does hit. It, coming it just, back it, just and it hits the ground. Only 77 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Holding on the play. Shackle for doing a pretty good job trying to sell that, that he had his left arm under there. Yeah, it wouldn't have done any good anyway because Llewellyn was holding. California will kick it away. And Frost once again as Bonner steps back. Stands around his own eight. 31 seconds to go in the third quarter. 14 to 7. The Redwoods with the lead. And there's a flag. Offense, five yards. Fourth down. Okay, these kind of flags aren't bad. Another five yards for a kicker. No, the only problem is that they're, they're moving back, and now it's a 45-yard or 47-yard punt. For, no, yeah, 42-yard 40, punt. And these guys haven't been able to kick the ball over 30 yards. Well, for a really good kicker, it's nice. You can get the ball easier inside the 10 was going to be the point. Of that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was nice. A little more of a challenge, perhaps, <laughs> now for Derek Frost. It was averaging 40 yards a kick coming into this game. He hangs it up and letting it bounce is Bonner, and it's down. Is it going to be at the one? Yeah, they did it. Nice play by the receiver. That was Shackle for getting down there to stop it. Let's check in down the sideline with Natalie. Well, no matter what happens in tonight's game, there is one happy little one here because his uncle Ronnie gave him a recovered game ball. Tori, what are you going to do with this ball? I'm going to play with my dad, and then, and then I'm going to go home and then do this. He's going to do that. Sounds like he's going to keep that ball in play. Kenny. First and 10, New York. All right, great stuff, Natalie. Ronnie Prude. <laughs> Handing it off, that was his nephew. Okay, so now at the one yard line, Gray is backed up and we'll just try to inch forward, just get a little breathing room to bring up second down. Picks up a couple, second and eight out to the three. And the final Second ticks off. That is the end of the third quarter. New York has still 97 yards to go to try to catch up. The Redwoods in their home opener with the lead 14-7. More when we come back live to San Francisco on HD Nets. California Redwoods still up here in AT&T Field and there are a lot of first in the UFL including the first woman headlinesman. Terry, how's it going? Uh, hi, Natalie, it's going great. It's a good workout and I'm having fun. Hey, that's what it's all about. Kenny Fogg, up to you. Made a big call, a touchdown call too down there. And Larry Upson, a man who's over it all, over all the officials have done a good job up here with us. I guess you gotta be proud of all your men and women so far, the way they've done it, Larry. And we get back to action as we start the fourth quarter. Second and eight at the three. New York backed up. And they'll keep it on the ground again, get a little breathing room and get out close to the first down. And that's a nice carry by Cecil Sapp. He has been a workhorse for them in the past and uh, they haven't really used him as much here. But then again, there was the fumble on the last series for New York. Yeah, they don't like to use you as much when you fumble well, the football. You know, and you wonder then if they hadn't been using him as much, and then they started to, and then he fumbled. So uh, as Bennett uh, limps a little to the sideline. But again, you know, you, you look at this game here, and the defenses are always pretty much ahead of the offenses. And in this game, it's really showing up. 
The Sentinels talk about rushing. They only have 53 yards rushing in this game. On third and one, and the pass is just behind Corin Robinson. Robinson with three catches, all those back in the first half, and so a fourth and four, and they will have to kick it away. And they'll have to hope for a good kick, or California's gonna have some really nice field position here. You figure either way, B.J. Sam's standing back right around his own 46 as Frost will boot it. I remember talking, we were talking to Denny Green earlier this week, and we asked him about B.J. Sam, said, so will he play any other position other than returner? He said, not on your life. <laughs> That's Horn with it. Horn has trouble. Big rush. Someone got a hand on it, and the ball is going to come to rest around the 32. It looked like Joe West might have gotten in there. Remember, Horn is punting for the first time. And he was under pressure after the bobble. I don't know if anybody got a hand on it or not. We'll take another look at it here. But either way, he got it off to the side, and it's a bad kick, obviously. Yeah, nobody yeah. touched it. He just he West just, got in for pressure. Yeah, he saw the pressure coming, so he had to pull back on the ball, and he hit it straight up in the air. First of all, he dropped the ball. An outstanding field position now for California. They take over at the 31. <laughs> on about a 20-yard punt. On the reverse, Gabriel. Gabriel shakes free, cuts down inside the 24 before Fincher brings it down. Well, Darian Williams just knows what it feels like to get faked out. Watch this, boom, boom, two steps. They got an arm, ah, but Gabriel put a move on him, and you're sitting there flat-footed, and you know, and you gotta make an open field tackle. You gotta always remember, that guy knows exactly where he's going, you don't. Seven on that, second and three at the 24. Lowry tied in on the right. Oh. On the ground. Oh, nice move by Ross. He spins away, just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage and avoids about a loss of four or five on that. And Ryan Wallace was right there. Boy, I, I just thought that Ryan Wallace was just decleated. I mean, he had a, a clear shot at Corey Ross. And watch this. I mean, this is this is the perfect hit, except he didn't wrap him up. And Ross just showed you a little bit of his strength. Ross out of Nebraska, where he was a co-captain, two years with the Ravens. Remember last week, he had problems, he cramped up. Dennis Green was telling us about it. He went in fresher in the second half. So far, he's been that way on third and five. They'll stay on the ground with John David Washington, his second carry, and Ryan Wallace shoots in to bring him down. I'll tell you, the linebackers in this game on both sides have been very active. So on fourth down, Parker Douglas, who is one for one on field goals this year, his long being the 26, will attempt this one about 42 yards. Kick is up. And it is good. The longest kick for Douglas. And it's now a 17-7 lead for California. They've increased it by two scores. We'll see if New York can respond. This telecast is authorized by the United Football League. Any rebroadcast or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the UFL is prohibited. You see that beautiful sight? That's why there's so many songs written about San Francisco. So many stories about San Francisco. As you look through the Golden Gate Bridge and at the city, remember you can purchase individual tickets for UFL games. Visit www.ufl-football.com. Group tickets call 877 UFL 2009. And the man who just kicked a field goal, his uh, personal best, Douglas. 
is ready to kick off. Standing back is Barkley and Gross. A 17-7 lead, biggest of the night for California. Barkley moves up to the 20, tripped up, leans forward to about the 22, and Shackelford is in on the tackle. So we talked about the running game, how important that is. And the Sentinels need to get some running going here. Only 53 yards in the game. Let's check in on their sideline with Ron. Kenny, I had uh, head coach Ted Cottrell, uh, he was just telling his offense what a key series this is, but uh, you know, this is live TV. He, he had to get back to doing what he does, and that's coaching. What, didn't have time for an interview? Down 17 Apparently seven. not, unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Ron. First to 10 at the 23. Gray, back, pops, fires, and it's incomplete, and we have a flag. Intended for Jamel Smith. Go, go, come on. Josh Lay in on the coverage. I'll tell you one thing that Quinn Gray, he will stand in that pocket. He will wait and wait and wait. He is fearless. He really is. It's against New York and they're refusing the penalty. Number 12 on the offense was illegally downfield. It was covered up by an outside receiver. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's very simple. What happened is Steve Sanders was, was split out, but the receiver outside of him was on the line of scrimmage, and so was Sanders. So once you covered up, being covered up on the line of scrimmage, that means you can't leave, leave. the line of scrimmage. You can't go down for a pass. And the main thing there is he got away from Jason Stewart, did uh, Quinn Gray. Did after he just step on his chest? I think he did. It's going to be first and 15, ball back at the 18. Gray, good drop, steps up, pressure on, and he goes down, but he's able to get it away. And that was Chris Cooper who got in to Gray and remember the grounding rule. As long as you get it back to the line of scrimmage or beyond, it but, is not intentional grounding. But he did not get it back to the line of scrimmage apparently because they just threw intentional the flag grounding, intentional grounding. Offense, that's a 10 yard penalty. It, it had to make it back to the 18. And I think that's what Gray's saying there. Did All right. Get to the 18, that's where it needs to be. All right, he's got about a six yard drop and he's hit right there. The ball, because now where is the ball? The ball is down. It never did get back to the line of Correction, scrimmage. It's been determined that the ball did get back to the line of scrimmage. There's the bar, there's no foul on the play. Well. The line of scrimmage is right about it's right at the 18 that's where the ball's marked that's the line of scrimmage yeah but the ball only the ball hit on the 16. that's not the line of scrimmage it didn't get back to the line of scrimmage oh, oh. break perhaps for gray on second and 15 at the 18. and again the pressure on gray firing and overshoots his man as he had everyone coming at him uh, a lot of pressure for Gray, hang, hanging in as best he can right now, but Cooper among those putting on the pressure. I'll tell you what, they're not even slowing these guys down now. They're all just teeing off and heading for the quarterback because they know, you know, they've got to make up 10 points somewhere. And the, the defensive linemen, they're not even thinking run. And when you got four guys down in a position and you know they're coming, you don't have that much time. You better keep a fullback in. New York 0 for 4 on third downs in this half. It's now third and 15. They'll try it on the ground. That su uh, surprises no one. Sap is brought down by Herbert. And Quating in on the tackle. I just, you know, we, we saw the, the beginning of the game when Quinn Gray had, had a tough time. Nothing has been going right offensively for New York in this second half. 
Aaron Horn had some problems the last time handling this punt and kicked it about 20 yards. What the guys say, they only pay you to do two things. Catch the ball when they center it to you and kick it. That's the second thing. It kick sounds it. easy. <laughs> it sounds easy. easy. Just keep your eye on the ball. Bang. There you go. That's a good comeback there for Horn. Sam settles under it, takes it, and goes down just about on the spot. Hogue is there for the tackle. California with the lead and the ball when we come back. And here in San Francisco, 17-7, California leads New York. 20 years ago to the day, it happened. There's two greats, Joe Morgan and Willie Mays, and the Giants and the A's in the Bay Area Series. And there's Mark McGuire explaining what had happened because what had happened at 5.04 Pacific time, about a seven-point earthquake, the largest since 1906 in San Francisco. Who will ever forget these pictures? Remember watching the game and Al Michaels getting ready to announce the World Series start between the Giants and the A's, and then the quake hits. And, uh, people were just riveted. Daryl Ewald, our executive producer, was living here at the time, was telling us uh, about how all that unfolded over a couple of hours or so. We get back to action, running, and still going is Corey Ross as he rips off a very nice run here for California into New York territory. Boy, that, that really is some solid running. Corey Ross has had, a, had a, a, a magnificent evening. Just take a look at the offensive lineman. Not, you know, a little bit of holding, but Corey Ross has got outstanding feet and great vision. 21 yards on that carry for Ross, who's having his best night. He's hit the century mark now with that carry. 9.45 to go. They'll keep it on the ground. Why not? That's where he's doing a lot of damage. And he'll pick up a couple of more yards before Robinson brings him down. You know, I was talking to you about his feet, what great feet this guy has in vision. On that last play, he picks up two yards, okay? But when you look at what he did in, in, on, the, on the run, here's the defensive lineman driving the offensive lineman back into him. Watch, watch, watch his movement here. Boom to the outside, right back in the inside in the hole, and picks up two yards, which could easily have been a loss. And Robinson uh, makes the tackle there on Ross. It is second and eight at the 41. Play action, McMahon looking, now under pressure, steps up, unloads wisely on that. Now, yeah, there's the classic example we're talking about. McMahon, you know, he's looking, he's, well, something had to happen. But you know what? You did the right thing. He's got a chance to throw the ball away. It's only now, it's third and eight, but, you, you know, you've got the ball moving. Don't do something stupid, and you're allowed to throw the ball away as long as it gets back to the line of scrimmage. There doesn't have to be anybody there. Engel Martin, meanwhile, warming up. You know, we're at the baseball park. Maybe he could go down and get in the bullpen. But Engel Martin <laughs> warming up. Will we see him on the next offensive series for New York in place of Quinn Gray? That is a question as we go to third and eight at the 41. McMahon drops, throws it over the middle. Gabriel has it first down inside the 30. Doug Gabriel, wow, that's an acquisition in his first game. He continues to come up big. Boy, isn't it nice to, to, to really pick up. He's an experienced football player, and he's got outstanding moves. But the neat part about him, we saw him on the adjustment for the, for the uh, long game earlier in the game. But just take a look at this guy. Total concentration on the ball. The ball is the most important thing. You cannot run with it until you catch it. They pick up 15, first and 10, down at the 27. And Gabriel with six catches in the game. Back on the ground and some more yards for Corey Ross going over 100. We talked about balance. Each coach has talked about that. Denny Green especially, his offense. I mean, he worked for one of the legends with Bill Walsh, obviously, and with the 49ers where he won a Super Bowl. Before that was Stanford. And talked about you got to have that balance. And kind of interesting, he got the, the pass almost set up his run a little bit if it works that way at times. Well, and you look at it, exactly what you're talking about is they have 137 yards rushing and 149 yards passing, and that is perfect. 
because they had no they had no passing on, threat. Brother. They had already gone well past what they did in the first game, so everybody could concentrate on the run. And this way, it's kind of been reversed. It's worked out, and Ross has a 100-yard game, and Ross is going to pick up a couple more yards, sweeping out wide to the right. The smart thing that Ross just did, I, I'm, I'm talking about a heads-up player here. We saw him his moves, reading blocks and everything, but here's Ross going to the outside. He sees the sideline coming. He gets down. He's going to take the hit, but he keeps the clock moving. Watch him here. Just see him. He goes to the outside, all right? There may be a small hole out there, but then he sees the sideline. Watch this. He'll go down, stay in bounds, and keep the clock going. Ross, uh, you know, like most of these guys, a great high school player, but he was so good he played in the first U.S. Army All-American Bowl nine years ago. Now it's become very popular when guys declare what college they're going to, and he declared he was going to play for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. And here he goes, a nice little hesitation. He picks up the first down and is spun around out of bounds. Good carry again by Corey Ross. You know, it's, a, it's amazing, though, when you're running well and they're blocking for you. This offensive line, look at these guys get to the outside. Number 77, that's Llewellyn, the, the, the left tackle out in front getting a block. But how you don't get tired when you're winning and you're getting over 100 yards, you don't want to come out. Hey, hey, don't bother me. I'm fine. It is a different story for this team, California, that jumped out to a 14-3 lead against Vegas last week and then was just blown out in the second half. They'll stay on the ground to Ross. Ross to the 10-yard line. And that offensive line I'm talking about, left tackle Llewellyn, the left guard Edwards Mabry is the center Ross. Isaiah Ross is the right guard, and Todd Williams is the tackle. These are big men, and they've been playing they've, all night long, but the weather is cool. They're, having, they're just having a good time. When you can run the ball as well as they're running the ball tonight, this makes not only the running back happy, the coach happy, but that offensive line very happy. You got a big look at number 74, big man Steve Edwards, former high school teammate of Donovan McMahon, McNabb when they were at the Mount Carmel High. And, Handoff is to John David Washington, who spins down close to the five-yard line. Yeah, Edwards, he was underclassman. McNabb was the big star. And of course, McNabb, we know, going on to Syracuse. Edwards went on to Central Florida. Two good players coming out of that school in a short period of time. And the one thing about this offensive line, too, is, Kenny, is, is that when they're all over 300 pounds, and they're really, this is, a, this is like, the, what, the fifth week that they've played together? And the more they play together, the more you understand the guy next to you. And these guys, you just watch them now because you have a good runner and Ross behind you. They're going to get better and better and better every week. Third and three. And a first down. Down to the two. It's Washington once again. Washington, uh, kind of typical, a lot of guys. He was an uh, undrafted free agent signee of the, Red, of the Rams. He was sent to play in Germany and NFL Europe, and uh, the former Morehouse College star carries that down to the two. Isn't it amazing? You look at the backs for California. Ross is 5'6", Washington's 5'9". <laughs> These are not really big, tall guys, but they can unload on you. They're eating the clock. It's just over four minutes to go in this game. Here it is. Handoff left side, and they will lose about a yard. Well, Corey Ross is saying the ball's loose, New York. Is it? Coming out of there with it is David Lofton. If that's a familiar football name. Well, his dad, James, one of the great receivers. And isn't that the way it goes, though? His yeah, father was one of the greatest receivers in the this, game, in the and he's a defensive oh, back. Defense number 93. <laughs> After distance to the goal, first down. Well, they'll move it a little closer on that penalty. California 83 yards rushing in the second half compared to 30 for New York. And doing the bulk of the work is Corey Ross. So first and goal just at the one. And off. And stop is Washington trying to leap up. And he's going to be met by Harwell. <laughs> This guy, I'm sorry, but this got to be frightening. Look, at I'm diving in. I'm going to get in the end zone. Wrong. Harwell just nailed him in the back with his helmet. Number number 56 was also in there. And Harwell, you know, you, you get these guys 
Uh, Mortensen is 56 is the guy that hits him in the back. But you get these guys, you want to jump up in the air, and you got your uh, the offensive liner down on the ground, you're going to get hammered. Second and goal at the one. Again, on the ground. Touchdown, Washington. That time, John David gets in. John David Washington slicing through on the left side. And it's all going well for Dennis Green and company now. now you're, you're, what a beautiful shot. You get a, see, a chance to see the hole. And Mortensen, number 56, is a linebacker. He never even made contact to Washington until Washington was already in the end zone. And uh, maybe somewhere tonight, a two-time Academy Award winner is applauding one John David Washington's touchdown run. Denzel, his father, who used to travel around watching his team Morehouse College when his son was a great runner back there. You think he isn't proud tonight? I bet he is. There's Washington with the touchdown. One more look at it. Red Woods in total control 24-7. Back in San Francisco, where Californians in complete control, 24 to 7, Redwoods over the Sentinels. And guys, despite Ted Cottrell telling us yesterday that quarterback Quinn Gray is his guy and he doesn't want to have one of those quarterback controversies, number three, Ingle Martin, is going into the game, the former Chief and Denver Bronco. Back upstairs. All right, thanks, Ron. So Gray becomes a spectator. Last week in the loss, uh, no offense hardly at all in the second half especially on the ground for New York they mustered only 65 yards in total offense last week around 43 yards in offense this week here in the second half but defensively they played for three quarters they played pretty well and got no help from the offense and you can I mean you, these guys were out there Teddy control was telling us uh, this week he said our defense was on the field down in Florida for 90 play or 60 plays of said, about 67 it was amazing yeah he said I you know you just can't be on on the field that long Barkley takes it up the middle to around the 25 and while no one likes to point fingers you have to wonder when the defense is doing their job and they say come on offense can you get us something and nothing happens and you got to keep going back and dealing with it. Well, if you point fingers at this early stage of, of their career in this league, you're going to be pointing a finger at the television set sitting at home. Uh, as we look at Ingle Martin out of Furman originally and. Uh, 11, 11, 11, 11. Played some with the Packers Titans. He's one of those guys that was kind of a lot of some practice squads after being drafted in the sixth round by the Packers and then to the Titans, to Kansas City, to Denver, you kind of get the idea. And Ryan Hogue is uh, in as receiver as well. Martin goes right to the air and intended for Hogue, and it's incomplete. You just wonder everywhere now if they're going to be looking at Dennis Green going, wow, well, let's see, he made a big change when he put Mike McMahon in at quarterback. He brought in eight new guys at once, started two of them bass in the secondary and then a surprise start with Gabriel who's become a prime receiver uh, we saw Holt a little bit although no catches tonight so this guy's willing to shake it up that quickly everybody better come every game yeah and, you know one thing that's a little disappointing Corin Robinson number 19 had a pretty good first quarter and, and then he disappeared Hug up, hug up. As did uh, Carfonzo Thorpe, who was their leading receiver last week with uh, two big catches and uh, four catches total and had the touchdown and kind of also was missing in action tonight. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you can't be critical of Ingle Martin either. I mean, here's a guy that has been sitting on the bench for three hours tonight. I mean, he warmed up before the game and he warmed up a little bit at halftime. Then he gave him a few shots on the last series of downs to warm up. But here's a guy that really hasn't played. I mean, you, when you're practicing every day, the starting quarterback, which was Quinn Gray, got, gets all the snaps. So here's a guy coming in, and, and the defense is just going after the, in the pass rush, and you're asking him to put the ball on the money. And that third was and a pretty ten, good shot. he did put it on the money, and there is Thorpe. Remember him, Garfonzo Thorpe makes the catch. They've had guys open. They've never finished anything. 
They moved the ball maybe 30 yards at a time, but then everything kind of broke down. The interceptions, the fumbles. It just, nothing was really put together. Now it's fourth down, two minutes and counting. Fourth and two at their own 33, and they're going for it. Martin toss and incomplete. 2.26 to go in this one. 24 to seven. Yeah, it's been a rough night for Teddy Cottrell and company. And welcome back to San Francisco. Tied up at halftime, it was a back and forth game and it's been all California in the second half, over 308 total yards now. Uh, for the Redwoods in this game. A very impressive, strong second half for them as they are about to go one and one. And Mike McMahon, nice debut. Hadn't played in two years. It gets the start tonight for the Redwoods. And into the game is Joel Falani, number 17, who was going in motion there. He was one of these guys that was brought in this week. One of the many receivers, a former star at Texas Tech, as you see, John David Washington, who had a touchdown a few minutes ago, stay in there and take the carry. Well, you said it when we were in a break. It fear is a, a great motivating factor. When you're, when you're afraid for your job, pal, you're going to play. And we come to the two-minute warning. Two minute warning. I wonder if there'll be some fear on the New York sideline. They're about to go 0-2. No fear for Danny Green tonight. Two minutes to go. There's a great looking shot here at, uh, from the, I think that's uh, McCovey Cove, isn't it? It's the name, of course, for the great uh, Willie McCovey. And, uh, you know, this is the 20th anniversary of the earthquake out here. And the man that shook it up, though, tonight is Dennis Green. Yeah, he really did. He shook up his team, and, and they, I think they did just about everything he asked them to do. They will stay on the ground on second 10, and it's Washington carrying once again. You know, we, we, it, this may be a new league, and, but you've got experienced coaches throughout this league, Jim Foster, Jim uh, Haslett, Denny Green, Teddy Cottrell, and these guys are no-nonsense guys. I mean, you know, Teddy's kind of a mild guy, and you think, you know, like, but I, I tell you, this eats at him because he, you know, he knows he's got a young team. Dennis Green knows he's got a young team, and, and, and they don't put a whole lot on their plate. Kenny, they, they kind of simplify it for them, you know, because they don't, they haven't had them for what, five weeks total. Yep. And so they, they want to see if, if, if these guys can just acclimate themselves to just the basics of what they have and hoping that they, you know, they can put it all together. Uh, they get inspiration. Simeon Rice is a guy for New York that, that you know, these, these young guys look up to and they try to emulate him. We saw him hustle tonight and this guy does hustle. I mean, it, you know, and he, you may see him smiling now, but he, he takes this personally. They all should and they do. And a quick pass and a completion to Shackelford. On fourth, on third and five. Well, this thing's right on the marker. Yeah. This, this. The, Press this, comes up to make the tackle. That's the first down. They got a first down here. Clock going with 1.15 to go. A couple of knees ought to do it. I think it's about time that that'll happen. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, forever they'll have a guy that drops back about uh, 15 to 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Won't they? That's about the only thing I could do now. Just well, kind of stand back there 40 <laughs> yards. Because you never know when Herm, <laughs> Herm Edwards will sneak in on the defense. <laughs> <laughs> If you can hire me just to do that, I can stand back about 30 yards from the, from the point of play and just make sure I'm out of here. Well, we can chuckle a little bit up here, all smiles for Dennis Green, but some uh, probably real concerns now for Ted Cottrell and company as New York is going to 0 and 2. And California bouncing right back and uh, really shaking things up with their lineup changes to the good, going 1 and 1. They're tied with Vegas, just a game behind the 2-0 Tuskers from Florida. And that's the game, 24-7. The Redwoods coming back 
in impressive fashion tonight. They discovered they do have a balanced offense, 308 total yards, 159 on the ground, 149 on the passing. You don't get more balanced than that, Hartley. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, I, I think the tribute to Dennis Green is making a quarterback change. He had a quarterback. The quarterback didn't produce one. Said, I got another one sitting on the ground and, uh, in, on the bench, uh, Mike McMahon, and she said, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance, son. Put you out there. And the thing about it is, it was so impressive about Mike McMahon right. is the fact that he put new guys out there with him. He only had one receiver from the old core. And Corey Ross, it opened things up for him. He has his first 100-yard rushing game and got a touchdown as well. And let's go down to Natalie with the winning coach. He said a win's a win no matter how it happens. But what was the key in tonight's game? Well, I thought we played real well defensively. I mean, we were a little bit banged up, but the guys played hard. We got some turnovers. The rhythm offensively was okay. We have a lot of young players, but hopefully it will be better each week as we go on and play. But I think it was great to be undefeated at home. That's the key thing, to play in front of the home crowd, to win the first game, and next week we try to have Storm in the Florida. You keep talking about the young players on your team. Who are you the most surprised with that stepped up tonight? Well, I think Corey Ross is really terrific back. As I said, if he was healthy the whole game against Las Vegas, you know, I think we would have made it interesting because he's a terrific player. Uh, I think that we, by adding Doug Gabriel, he can make big plays. Our offensive line was really solid. And then defensively, I mean, we fly around. We're very fast defensively. Guys like Robert Herbert can make a lot of plays and the rest of the guys. So defensively, we have really improved a lot. Last thing, you always talked about urgency. You wanted to see a sense of urgency with your team. Did you see it? Yeah, we absolutely did. I think it showed up in special teams. Uh, it seemed like we won the battle on offense, defense, and special teams, and that's what urgency is all about. Thank you very much, Coach. You bet. Going to go ahead and send it over to Ron with one of New York's players. Ron. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Chris Barclay, you get the start tonight. Uh, the offense just didn't seem to get in sync. What did their defense do to limit your running game? Um, I think it was more so that we, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a lot. Um, you know, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, we didn't execute like we, we, we should have. Uh, they, they played us well. They had a good scheme. They loaded a the box up on us. We, they knew we wanted to run the ball. That's kind of our identity. Uh, when we came into this game, it was a game plan. We wanted to run the ball and set the tone from that point and kind of branch out. But uh, they loaded the box up, and we, we never really got a rhythm, for, you know, as an offense, and that's, that's important. Well, you guys definitely were on the sidelines for a long time. The defense was on the field for, for most of that game. Personally for you, you get the opportunity tonight to play. And what does this opportunity in the UFL mean to you? Uh, it's, it's a unique opportunity and for a guy like myself. You know, a lot of us have been in the NFL and, and, and played in the NFL and had opportunities to make plays. Um, and this is, a, this is just a, a, a time for everyone, guys like myself, to be able to get some good film and, and put some good things on film out there and show, show the NFL and the personnel there that we can play ball. Um, and and there's, some good, there's some good guys over here. And At there's a lot of talent. Very good, Chris. Thank you so much for the time. We'll see you next week. Natalie, back over to you. Thanks, Ron. I'm now with the winning QB, Mike McMahon. Mike, what were your thoughts on your offense tonight? Uh, we did some good things, and we did, you know, uh, some bad things. I got to make some corrections. I turned the ball over twice. Can't have that once in the red zone. And uh, but the good thing was we got the win, and uh, you know that's one in a row so far. So moving forward, what corrections are you going to need to make? Uh, well, you know, just clean up the sloppiness. Uh, a couple times. Uh, it just, it just was, it was just sloppy. You know, you just gotta calm down, settle things down in the pocket, and uh, you know, we, in the passing game, we, we did some good things, but we left a lot out there, and uh, you know, we'd like to get back and, and get on the right page there. Well, like your coach said, a win is a win. California now one and one. Kenny, up to you. All right, thank you, Natalie. As we talked about at the very start of this show, it was a bold move for Dennis Green. He was going to come out with a new quarterback tonight. He brought in eight new players and started two of them. So wholesale changes, and it paid off for him, particularly with Martin, a very solid performance, a couple of back-to-back -back, uh, interceptions, some miscues, but he bounced right back. Yeah, you know, you, when you listen to Dennis, it's almost like, well, you know, okay, we made a lot, we made some mistakes and we won the football game. But I guarantee he's very proud of this football team because they, they just did not look good a week ago. They didn't. I mean, they didn't. They didn't, never finished anything. He got so frustrated with his quarterback because the quarterback didn't do anything for him. Boyd, that he, I mean, you make a change at quarterback in in in, in a new league, plus bringing in eight new players, and but he did have. That offensive line and that defensive line. The defense played solid. 
The offensive line played really good, and the special teams were outstanding. You know, I, that's what I liked about him. He made a change, and he stayed with it, and it produced. He talked about balance and how important it is, especially for a guy so uh, offensive-centered as uh, Green has been throughout his college and pro career. And in this case, uh, you know, you run to set up the pass usually, but he had to bring in a passer to get that ground game opened up, and Corey Ross responded with a 100-yard game tonight. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me is the most encouraging thing about his football team tonight. They were balanced off it, uh, on, on passing game and the running game, and I, I think he is very proud, uh, again, of that offensive line. The job that they did so that Ross could run for over 100 yards was just sensational. A balanced attack tonight for California. It was tied up at seven at intermission, but the second half was all California. We'll be back to wrap it up when we come back to San Francisco. Yeah, they want to get Ross's autograph tonight. Big night for Corey and the gang. They win it easily. California wins 24 to seven, all California in the second half. Now we talked about the Redwoods, Dennis Green made changes. Paul, as we get ready to look down the road for New York, still five more regular season games to go. Some big changes needed for Cottrell's team, obviously. Well, New York and Teddy Cottrell, they have a week off, they have a bye. And I think, I think Teddy realizes once he looks at the film with this football game, he's gonna realize there's gotta be some changes made. There've gotta be some other guys that really wanna play because there are a lot of guys standing around tonight. 2-0 in the league, the Florida Tuskers, as they've defeated Las Vegas earlier this week. But now Vegas, a team that rallied to blow out California. Well, a week later, there they are, dead even in second place at 1-1 one one at the moment. And New York 0-2, still five regular season games to go leading up to the championship game uh, around Thanksgiving weekend. So it'll be very interesting. Remember to keep it here for HDNet coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll be back in uh, Florida to see those Tuskers in action. Thank you for being with us tonight. Big night for California. They did shake it up, did Dennis Green and company. A new quarterback, new players coming in, and fireworks started early with the introduction of the players, and then they took charge in a very balanced attack. McMahon and company on the move. And uh, coming back was New York, but it was the rest of the way, California. Darrell Lee, Walter, executive producer, directed by Hank Lena, great job. Bo Vonsakun, Chris Markwell coordinates everything for us. Mike and Ruben on graphics. Our engineering crew coming to a town near you, Dan, Jeff, and Andy. Be sure to tune in on Friday, October 30th. HDNet travels to Florida. The Tuskers host the Las Vegas Locos pregame coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern. For my broadcast partners, Paul McGuire, Ron Cruck, and Natalie Taylor, I'm Kenny Rice. So long from San Francisco. Final score, Redwoods 24, Sentinels 7.